Henry IV, Part 1. William Shakespeare. Act 1. Scene I. London. The Palace. Enter King Henry, Lord John of Lancaster, the Earl of Westmoreland, Sir Walter Blunt, and others. King Henry IV. So shaken as we are, so one with care. Find we a time for frighted peace to pant, and breathe short-winded accents of new broils. To be commenced in strands afar remote, no more the thirsty entrance of this soil. She'll daub her lips with her own children's blood. Nor more she'll trenching war channel her fields, nor bruise her flowerets with the armed hoofs, of hostile paces, those opposed eyes, which, like the meteors of a troubled heaven, all of one nature, of one substance bred, did lately meet in the intestine shock, and furious close of civil butchery, shall now, in mutual well-beseeming ranks, march all one way and be no more opposed, against acquaintance, kindred and allies, the edge of war, like an ill-sheathed knife, no more shall cut his master, therefore, friends, as far as to the sepulchre of Christ, whose soldier now, under whose blessed cross, we are impressed and engaged to fight, forth with the power of English shall we levy, whose arms were moulded in their mother's womb, to chase these pagans in those holy fields, over whose acres walked those blessed feet, which fourteen hundred years ago were nailed, for our advantage on the bitter cross, but this our purpose now is twelve month old, and bootless tis to tell you we will go, therefore we meet not now, then let me hear, of you, my gentle cousin Westmoreland, what yesternight our council did decree, in forwarding this dear expedience, Westmoreland, my liege, this haste was hot in question, and many limits of the charge set down, but yesternight, when all athwart the came, a post from Wales loaden with heavy news, whose worst was, that the noble Mortimer, leading the men of Herefordshire to fight, against the irregular and wild Glendower, was by the rude hands of that Welshman taken, a thousand of his people butchered, upon whose dead corpse there was such misuse, such beastly shameless transformation, by those Welsh women done as may not be, without much shame retold or spoken of, King Henry IV, it seems then that the tidings of this oil, break off our business for the holy land, Westmoreland, this matched with other did, my gracious lord, for more uneven and unwelcome news, came from the north and thus it did import. On holy rude day, the gallant hot spur there, young Harry Percy and brave Archibald, that ever valiant and approved Scot, at home it and met, where they did spend a sad and bloody hour, as by discharge of their artillery, and shape of likelihood, the news was told, for he that brought them, in the very heat, and pride of their contention did take horse, uncertain of the issue any way, King Henry IV, here is a dear, a true industrious friend, Sir Walter Blunt, new lighted from his horse, stained with the variation of each soil, betwixt that homidon and this seat of ours, and he hath brought us smooth and welcome news, the Earl of Douglas is discomfited, ten thousand bold Scots, two and twenty knights, balked in their own blood did Sir Walter see, on homidon's plains, of prisoners, Hotspur took, Mordake the Earl of Fife, and eldest son, to beaten Douglas, and the Earl of Athill, of Murray, Angus, and Mentith. And is not this an honourable spoil, a gallant prize? Ha, cousin, is it not, Westmoreland, in faith? It is a conquest for a prince to boast of, King Henry IV, yea, though thou makest me sad and makest me sin, in envy that my lord Northumberland, should be the father to so blessed a son, a son who is the theme of honour's tongue, amongst a grove, the very straightest plant, who is sweet fortune's minion and her pride, whilst I, by looking on the praise of him, see riot and dishonour stain the brow, of my young Harry, oh that it could be proved, that some night tripping fairy had exchanged, in cradle clothes our children where they lay, and called mine Percy, his planted unit, then would I have his Harry, and he mine, but let him from my thoughts, what think you, cos, of this young Percy's pride, the prisoners, which he in this adventure hath surprised, to his own use he keeps, and sends me word, I shall have none but Mordek Earl of Fife, Westmoreland, this is his uncle's teaching, this is Worcester, malevolent to you in all aspects, which makes him prune himself, and bristle up, the crest of youth against your dignity, King Henry IV, but I have sent for him to answer this, and for this cause a while we must neglect, our holy purpose to Jerusalem, cousin, on Wednesday next our council we, will hold at Windsor, 
so inform the lords. But come yourself with speed to us again? For more is to be said and to be done. The out of anger can be uttered, Westmoreland, I will, my liege, exeunt, scene 2. London. An apartment of the princes. Enter the Prince of Wales and Falstaff. Falstaff, now, Hal, what time of day is it, lad? Prince Henry, thou art so fat-witted, with drinking of old sack, and unbuttoning the after supper and sleeping upon, benches after noon, that thou hast forgotten to, demand that truly which thou wouldst truly know, what a devil hast thou to do with the time of their, day? Unless ours were cups of second minutes, capons and clocks the tongues of boards and dials there, signs of leaping houses and the blessed sun himself, a fair hot wench in flame colored taffeta, I see no reason why thou shouldst be so superfluous to demand. The time of the day, false stuff, indeed, you come near me now, pal, for we that take. Purses go by the moon and the seven stars, and not, by Phoebus. He comma that wandering night so fair. And, I prithee, sweet wag, when thou art king, as, God, save thy grace, comma majesty I should say, for grace, thou wilt have none, comma, Prince Henry, what, none, false stuff, no, by my troth, not so much as will serve to. Prologue to an egg and butter, Prince Henry. Well, how then? Come, roundly, roundly, false stuff, marry, then, sweet wag, when thou art king, let not, us that are squires of the night's body be called, thieves of the day's beauty, let us be Dianas, foresters, gentlemen of the shade, minions of their, moon, and let men say we be men of good government. Being governed, as the sea is, by our noble and chaste mistress the moon, under whose countenance we steal, Prince Henry, thou sayest well, and it holds well too, for the fortune of us that are the moon's men doth a band, flow like the sea, being governed, as the sea is, by the moon, as, for proof, now, a purse of gold, most resolutely snatched on Monday night and most dissolutely spent on Tuesday morning, got with, swearing lay by and spent with crying bring in, now in as low an ebb as the foot of the ladder, and by and by in as high a flow as the ridge of the gallows, false stuff, by the Lord, thou sayest true, lad. And is not my, hostess of the tavern a most sweet wench, Prince Henry, as the honey of Hybler, my old lad of the castle? And, is not a buff jerk in a most sweet robe of durance, false stuff, how now, how now, mad wag? What, in thy quips and, thy quiddities? What a plague have I to do with a, Buff Jerkin, Prince Henry, why, what a pox have I to do with my hostess of the tavern, false stuff, well, thou hast called her to a reckoning many a, time and doft, Prince Henry, did I ever call for thee to pay thy part, false stuff, no, I'll give thee thy due, thou hast paid all the, Prince Henry, yea, and elsewhere, so far as my coin would stretch, and where it would not, I have used my credit, false stuff, yea, and so used it that were it not here apparent, that thou art heir apparent but, I prithee, sweet, wag, shall there be gallows standing in England when, thou art king? And resolution thus fobbed as it is, with the rusty curb of old father antic the law, do, not thou, when thou art king, hang a thief, Prince Henry, no, thou shalt, false stuff, shall I? O oh, rare! By the Lord, I'll be a brave judge, Prince Henry, thou judgest false already, I mean, thou shalt have the hanging of the thieves and so become a rare hangman, false stuff, well, pal, well, and in some sort it jumps with my, humour as well as waiting in the court, I can tell, you, Prince Henry, for obtaining of suits, false stuff, yea, for obtaining of suits, whereof the hangman, hath no lean wardrobe, splud, I am as melancholy, as a jib cat or a lug bear, Prince Henry, or an old lion, or a lover's lute, false stuff, yea, or the drone of a Lincolnshire bagpipe, Prince Henry, what sayest thou to a hare, or the melancholy of, Mordich, false stuff, thou hast the most unsavoury similes and art indeed, the most comparative, rascaliest, sweet young, prince. But, pal, I prithee, trouble me no more, with vanity. I would to God thou and I knew where a, commodity of good names were to be bought. An old, lord of the council rated me the other day in there, street about you, sir, but I marked him not and yet, he talked very wisely, but I regarded him not, and, yet he talked wisely, and in the street too, Prince Henry, thou didst well, for wisdom cries out in their, streets, 
and no man regards it, false stuff, oh, thou hast damnable iteration and art indeed able, to corrupt a saint, thou hast done much harm upon, me, Tal, God forgive thee for it, before I knew, thee, Tal, I knew nothing, and now am I, if a man, should speak truly, little better than one of their, wicked, I must give over this life, and I will give, it over, by the Lord, and I do not, I am a villain, I'll be damned for never a king's son in, Christendom, Prince Henry, where shall we take a purse tomorrow, Jack, Falstaff, Zunds, where thou wilt, lad, I'll make one, and I, do not, call me villain and baffle me, Prince Henry, I see a good amendment of life in thee, from praying, to purse taking, Falstaff, why, Tal, tis my vocation, Hal, tis no sin for a, man to labor in his vocation, enter poins, poins, now shall we know if Gad shall have set a, match, oh, if men were to be saved by merit, what, hole in hell were hot enough for him, this is there, most omnipotent villain that ever cried stand to, a true man, Prince Henry, good morrow, Ned, poins, good morrow, sweet Al, what says Monsieur Remorse, what says Sir John Sack and Sugar, Jack, how, agrees the devil in thee about thy soul, that thou, soldest him on Good Friday last for a cup of Madeira, and a cold capon's leg, Prince Henry, Sir John stands to his word, the devil shall have, his bargain, for he was never yet a breaker of, proverbs, he will give the devil his due, poins, then art thou damned for keeping thy word with the devil, Prince Henry, else he had been damned for cousining the devil, poins, but, my lads, my lads, tomorrow morning, by four, o'clock, early at Gadshill. There are pilgrims going, to Canterbury with rich offerings, and traders, riding to London with fat purses, I have visits, for you all, you have horses for yourselves. Gadshill lies tonight in Rochester, I have bespoke, supper tomorrow night in East Cheap, we may do it, as secure as sleep. If you will go, I will stuff, your purse is full of crowns, if you will not, tarry, at home and be hanged, false stuff. Hear ye, Yedward, if I tarry at home and go not, I'll hang you for going, poins, you will, chops, false stuff, pal, wilt thou make one, Prince Henry, who, I rob, I a thief, not I, by my faith, false stuff, there's neither honesty, manhood, nor good, fellowship in thee, nor thou camest not of the blood, royal, if thou darest not stand for ten shillings, Prince Henry, well then, once in my days I'll be a madcap, false stuff, why, that's well said, Prince Henry, well, come what will, I'll tarry at home, false stuff, by the Lord, I'll be a traitor then, when thou art king, Prince Henry, I care not, poins, Sir John, I prithee, leave the prince and me alone, I will lay him down such reasons for this adventure, that he shall go, false stuff, well, God give thee the spirit of persuasion and him, the ears of profiting, that what thou speakest may, move and what he hears may be believed, that there, true prince may, for recreation's sake, prove a false, thief, for the poor abuses of the time want, countenance, farewell, you shall find me in East Cheap, Prince Henry, farewell, thou latter spring, farewell, all hell and summer, exit false stuff, poins, now, my good sweet honey lord, ride with us, tomorrow, I have a jest to execute that I cannot, manage alone, false stuff, Bardolph, Peter and Gadshill, shall rob those men that we have already waylaid. Yourself and I will not be there, and when they, have the booty, if you and I do not rob them, cut, this head off from my shoulders, Prince Henry. How shall we part with them in setting forth, poins, why, we will set forth before or after them, and, appoint them a place of meeting, wherein it is at, our pleasure to fail, and then will they adventure, upon the exploit themselves, which they shall have no sooner achieved, but we'll set upon them, Prince Henry, yea, but tis like that they will know us by our, horses, by our habits and by every other, appointment, to be ourselves, poins, tut, our horses they shall not see, I'll tie them, in the wood, our visards we will change after we, leave them, and, sirrah, I have cases of buckram, for the nonce, to emask our noted outward garments, Prince Henry, yea, but I doubt they will be too hard for us, poins, well, for two of them, I know them to be as true bred cowards as ever turned back, and for the third, if he fight longer than he sees reason, I'll forswear arms.
The virtue of this jest will be, there, incomprehensible lies that this same fat rogue will, tell us when we meet at supper, how thirty, at, least, he fought with, what wards, what blows, what, extremities he endured, and in the reproof of this, lies the jest, Prince Henry, well, I'll go with thee, provide us all things, necessary and meet me tomorrow night in East Cheap, there I'll sup, farewell, poins, farewell, my lord, exit poins, Prince Henry, I know you all, and will a while uphold, the unyoked humour of your idleness, yet herein will I imitate the sun, who doth permit the base contagious clouds, to smother up his beauty from the world, that, when he please again to be himself, being wanted, he may be more wondered at, by breaking through the foul and ugly mists, of vapours that did seem to strangle him, if all the year were playing holidays, to sport would be as tedious as to work, but when they seldom come, they wished for come, and nothing pleaseth but rare accidents, so, when this loose behaviour I throw off, and pay the debt I never promised, by how much better than my word I am, by so much shall I falsify men's hopes, and like bright metal on a sullen ground, my reformation, glittering or my fault, shall show more goodly and attract more eyes, than that which hath no foil to set it off, I'll so offend, to make offence a skill, redeeming time when men think least I will, exit, scene 3, London, the palace, enter the king, Northumberland, Worcester, Hotspur, Sir Walter Blunt, with others King Henry IV, my blood hath been too cold and temperate, unapt to stir at these indignities, and you have found me, for accordingly, you tread upon my patience, but be sure, I will from henceforth rather be myself, mighty and to be feared, than my condition, which hath been smooth as oil, soft as young down, and therefore lost that title of respect, which the proud soul ne'er pays but to the proud, Earl of Worcester, our house, my sovereign liege, little deserves, the scourge of greatness to be used on it, and that same greatness to which our own hands, have hulked to make so portly, Northumberland, my lord Dot, King Henry IV, Worcester, get thee gone, for I do see, danger and disobedience in thine eye, oh, sir, your presence is too bold and peremptory, and majesty might never yet endure, the moody frontier of a servant brow, you have good leave to leave us, when we need, your use and counsel, we shall send for you, exit Worcester, you were about to speak, to North, Northumberland, yea, my good lord, those prisoners in your highness name demanded, which Harry Percy here at Homerden took, were, as he says, not with such strength denied, as is delivered to your majesty, either envy, therefore, or misprison, is guilty of this fault and not my son, Hotspur, my liege, I did deny no prisoners, but I remember, when the fight was done, when I was dry with rage and extreme toil, breathless and faint, leaning upon my sword, came there a certain lord, neat, and trimly dressed, fresh as a bridegroom, and his chin new reaped, showed like a stubble land at harvest home, he was perfumed like a milliner, and twixt his finger and his thumb he held, a pound set box, which ever and anon, he gave his nose and took it away again, who there with angry, when it next came there, took it in snuff, and still he smiled and talked, and as the soldiers bore dead bodies by, he called them untaught knaves, unmannerly, to bring a slovenly unhandsome course, betwixt the wind and his nobility, with many holiday and lady terms, he questioned me, amongst the rest, demanded, my prisoners in your majesty's behalf, I then, all smarting with my wounds being cold, to be so pestered with a popinjay, out of my grief and my impatience, answered neglecting I know not what, he should or he should not, for he made me mad, to see him shine so brisk and smell so sweet, and talk so like a waiting gentlewoman, of guns and drums and wounds comma God save the mark exclamation mark, and telling me the sovereignest thing on earth, was palmacity for an inward bruise, and that it was great pity, so it was. This villainous salt Petra should be digged, out of the bowels of the harmless earth, which many a good tall fellow had destroyed, so cowardly, and but for these vile guns, he would himself have been a soldier, this bald unjointed chat of his, my lord. I answered indirectly, as I said, and I beseech you, let not his report, come current for an accusation, betwixt my love and your high majesty, Sir Walter Blunt, the circumstance considered, good my lord, Wait, the Lord Harry Percy then had said, to such a person and in such a place, at such a time, 
with all the rest retold, may reasonably die and never rise, to do him wrong or any way impeach, what then he said, so he unsay it now, King Henry IV, why, yet he doth deny his prisoners, but with proviso and exception, that we at our own charge shall ransom straight, his brother-in-law, the foolish Mortimer, who, on my soul, hath willfully betrayed, the lives of those that he did lead to fight, against that great magician, damned Glendower, whose daughter, as we hear, the Earl of March, hath lately married. Shall coffers, then, be emptied to redeem a traitor home? Shall we but to reason? And indent with fears, when they have lost and forfeited themselves, no, on the barren mountains let him starve. For I shall never hold that man my friend, whose tongue shall ask me for one penny cost, to ransom home revolted Mortimer, Hotspur, revolted Mortimer, he never did fall off, my sovereign liege, but by the chance of war, to prove that true, needs no more but one tongue for all those wounds, those mouthed wounds, which valiantly he took, when on the gentle seven sedgy bank, in single opposition, hand to hand, he did confound the best part of an hour, in changing hardment with great Glendower, three times they breathed and three times did, they drink, upon agreement, of swift seventh flood, who then, affrighted with their bloody looks, ran fearfully among the trembling reeds, and hid his crisp head in the hollow bank. Bloodstained with these valiant combatants, never did base and rotten policy, colour her working with such deadly wounds. Nor could the noble Mortimer, receive so many, and all willingly. Then let not him be slandered with revolt, King Henry IV, thou dost belie him, Percy, thou dost belie him. He never did encounter with Glendower, I tell thee. He durst as well have met the devil alone, as Owen Glendower for an enemy, art thou not ashamed? But, sirrah, henceforth, let me not hear you speak of Mortimer. Send me your prisoners with the speediest means, or you shall hear in such a kind from me, as will displease you. My lord Northumberland, we license your departure with your son, send us your prisoners, or you will hear of it. Exeunt King Henry, Blunt, and Train, Hotspur, and if the devil come and draw for them, I will not send them, I will after straight, and tell him so, for I will ease my heart. Albeit I make a hazard of my head, Northumberland, what, drunk with choler? Stay and pause a while. Here comes your uncle, re-enter Worcester, Hotspur, speak of Mortimer, Zounds, I will speak of him, and let my soul, want mercy, if I do not join with him, yea, on his part one ll empty all these veins, and shed my dear blood drop by drop in the dust but I will lift the downtrod Mortimer, as high in the air as this unthankful king, as this ingrate and cankibling Brauch, Northumberland, brother, the king hath made your nephew mad, Earl of Worcester, who struck this heat up after I was gone, Hotspur, he will, forsooth, have all my prisoners, and when I urged the ransom once again, of my wife's brother, then his cheek looked pale, and on my face he turned an eye of death, trembling even at the name of Mortimer, Earl of Worcester, I cannot blame him, was not he proclaimed, by Richard that dead is the next of blood, Northumberland, he was, I heard the proclamation. And then it was when the unhappy king, whose wrongs in as God pardon exclamation mark did set forth, upon his Irish expedition, from whence he intercepted did return, to be deposed and shortly murdered, Earl of Worcester, and for whose death we in the world's wide mouth, live scandalized and foully spoken of, Hotspur, but soft, I pray you. Did King Richard then proclaim my brother Edmund Mortimer, heir to the crown, Northumberland? He did, myself did hear it, Hotspur, nay, then I cannot blame his cousin King, that wished him on the barren mountains starve, but shall it be that you, that set the crown, upon the head of this forgetful man, and for his sake wear the detested blot, of murderous subornation, shall it be, that you a world of curses undergo, being the agents, or base second means? The courts? the ladder, or the hangman ra there, oh, pardon me that I descend so low, to show the line and the predicament, wherein you range under this subtle king, shall it for shame be spoken in these days, or fill up chronicles in time to come, that men of your nobility and power, did gauge them both in an unjust behalf, as both of you God pardon it exclamation mark have done, to put down Richard, that sweet lovely rose, and plant this thorn, this canker, billing broke, and shall it in more shame be further spoken, that you are fooled, discarded and shook off, by him for whom these shames ye underwent, no, 
yet time serves wherein you may redeem, your banished honours and restore yourselves, into the good thoughts of the world again. Revenge the jeering and disdained contempt, of this proud king, who studies day and night, to answer all the debt he owes to you, even with the bloody payment of your deaths. Therefore, I say, Earl of Worcester, peace, cousin, say no more. And now I will unclasp a secret book. And to your quick conceiving discontents, I'll read you matter deep and dangerous, as a full of peril and adventurous spirit, as to all walk a current roaring loud, on the unsteadfast footing of a spear, hot spur, if he fall in, good night. Or sink or swim, send danger from the east unto the west, so on across it from the north to south. And let them grapple, oh, the blood more stirs, to rouse a lion than to start a hare, Northumberland, imagination of some great exploit, drives him beyond the bounds of patience, hot spur, by heaven, methinks it were an easy leap, to pluck bright honour from the pale-faced moon, or dive into the bottom of the deep, where fathomline could never touch the ground, and pluck up drowned honour by the locks, so he that doth redeem her thence might wear, without car rival, all her dignities. But out upon this half-faced fellowship, Earl of Worcester, he apprehends a world of figures here, but not the form of what he should attend, good cousin, give me audience for a while, hot spur, I cry you mercy, Earl of Worcester, those same noble Scots, that are your prisoners, comma, hot spur, I'll keep them all. By God, he shall not have a Scot of them. No, if a Scot would save his soul, he shall not. I'll keep them, by this hand, Earl of Worcester, you start away, and lend no ear unto my purposes, those prisoners you shall keep, hot spur, nay, I will, that's flat. He said he would not ransom Mortimer, forbade my tongue to speak of Mortimer, but I will find him when he lies asleep. And in his ear I'll holler Mortimer, nay, I'll have a starling shall be taught to speak, nothing but Mortimer, and give it him, to keep his anger still in motion. Earl of Worcester, hear you, cousin, a word, hot spur, all studies here I solemnly defy. Save how to gall and pinch this spilling broke, and that same sword and buckle a prince of Wales. But that I think his father loves him not, and would be glad he met with some mischance. I would have him poisoned with a pot of ale. Earl of Worcester, farewell, kinsman, I'll talk to you. When you are better tempered to attend, Northumberland, why, what a wasp's tongue and impatient fool, art thou to break into this woman's mood? Tying thine ear to no tongue but thine own, hot spur, why, look you, I am whipped and scourged with rods, nettled and stung with bismires, when I hear, of this vile politician, Bolingbroke, in Richard's time comma what do you call the place question mark, a plague upon it, it is in Gloucestershire, twas where the madcap duke his uncle kept, his uncle York, where I first bowed my knee, unto this king of smiles, this Bolingbroke comma, splud exclamation mark, when you and he came back from Ravenspeg, Northumberland, at Berkeley Castle, hot spur, you say true, why, what a candy deal of courtesy, this fawning greyhound then did proffer me, look comma when his infant fortune came to age, and gentle Harry Percy, and kind cousin, oh, the devil take such cousinas, God forgive me, good uncle, tell your tale, I have done, Earl of Worcester, nay, if you have not, to it again, we will stay your leisure, hot spur, I have done, I faith, Earl of Worcester, then once more to your Scottish prisoners, deliver them up without their ransom straight, and make the Douglas son your only mean, for powers in Scotland, which, for divers reasons, which I shall send you written, be assured, will easily be granted, you, my lord, to Northumberland, your son in Scotland being thus employed, shall secretly into the bosom creep, of that same noble prelate, well beloved, the Archbishop, Hotspur, of York, is it not, Earl of Worcester, true, who bears hard, his brother's death at Bristol, the Lord Scroop, I speak not this in estimation, as what I think might be, but what I know, is ruminated, plotted and set down, and only stays but to behold the face, of that occasion that shall bring it on, hot spur, I smell it, upon my life, it will do well, Northumberland, before the game is afoot, thou still let'st slip, hot spur, why, it cannot choose but be a noble plot, and then the power of Scotland and of York, to join with Mortimer, ha, huh? Earl of Worcester, and so they shall, hot spur, in faith, it is exceedingly well aimed, Earl of Worcester, and tis no little reason bids us speed, to save our heads by raising of a head, for, 
bear ourselves as even as we can. The king will always think him in our debt, and think we think ourselves unsatisfied, till he hath found a time to pay us home, and see already how he doth begin, to make us strangers to his looks of love, Hotspur, he does, he does, we'll be revenged on him, Earl of Worcester, cousin, farewell, no further go in this, the I by letters shall direct your course, when time is ripe, which will be suddenly, I'll steal to Glendower and Lord Mortimer, where you and Douglas and our powers at once, as I will fashion it, shall happily meet, to bear our fortunes in our own strong arms, which now we hold at much uncertainty, Northumberland, farewell, good brother, we shall thrive, I trust, Hotspur, uncle, adieu, oh, let the hours be short, till fields and blows and groans applaud our sport, exeunt, act two, scene I, Rochester, Unin yard, enter a carrier with a lantern in his hand first carrier, hey ho, an it be not for by the day, I'll be, hanged, Charles Wayne is over the new chimney, and, yet our horse not packed, what, ostler, ostler, within, anon, anon, first carrier, I prithee, Tom, beat cuts saddle, put a few flocks, in the point, poor jade, is rung in the withers out, of all cess, enter another carrier, second carrier, peas and bins are as dank here as a dog, and that, is the next way to give poor jades the bots, this, house is turned upside down since Robin Osler died, first carrier, poor fellow, never joined since the price of oats, rose, it was the death of him, second carrier, I think this be the most villainous house in all, London road for fleas, I am stung like a tench, first carrier, like a tench, by the mass, there is ne'er a king, Crescent could be better bit than I have been since, the first cock, second carrier, why, they will allow us ne'er a Jordan, and then we, leak in your chimney, and your chamber I breeds, fleas like a loach, first carrier, what, ostler, come away and be hanged, second carrier, I have a gammon of bacon and two razors of ginger, to be delivered as far as Charing Cross, first carrier, God's body, the turkeys in my pannier are quite, starved, what, ostler, a plague on thee, hast thou, never an eye in thy head, canst not hear, an, twear not as good deed as drink, to break the pate, on thee, I'm a very villain, come, and be hanged, hast thou no faith in thee, enter Gadgeville, Gadgeville, good morrow, carriers, what's a clock, first carrier, I think it be two o'clock, Gadgeville, I pray thee lend me thy lantern, to see my gelding, in the stable, first carrier, nay, by God, soft, I know a trick worth two of that, I faith, Gadgeville, I pray thee, lend me thine, second carrier, eh, when, canst tell, lend me thy lantern, quoth, he, marry, I'll see thee hanged first, Gadgeville, sir a carrier, what time do you mean to come to London, second carrier, time enough to go to bed with a candle, I warrant, thee, come, neighbour mugs, we'll call up the, gentlemen, they will along with company, for they, have great charge, exeunt carriers, Gadgeville, what, ho, Chamberlain, Chamberlain, within, at hand, quoth Pickpurse, Gadgeville, that's even as fair as at hand, quoth the, Chamberlain, for thou variest no more from picking, of purses than giving direction doth from labouring, thou layest the plot how, enter Chamberlain, Chamberlain, good morrow, Master Gadgeville, it holds current that, I told you yesternight, there's a Franklin in there, Wild of Kent hath brought three hundred marks with, him in gold, I heard him tell it to one of his, company last night at supper, a kind of auditor, one, that hath abundance of charge to, God knows what, they are up already, and call for eggs and butter, they will away presently, Gadgeville, sirrah, if they meet not with Saint Nicholas, clerks, I'll give thee this neck, Chamberlain, no, I'll none of it, I pray thee keep that for there, hangman, for I know thou worshippest Saint Nicholas, as truly as a man of falsehood may, Gadgeville, what talkest thou to me of the hangman? If I hang, I'll make a fat pair of gallows, for if I hang, old, Sir John hangs with me, and thou knowest he is no, starveling. Tut! There are other Trojans that thou, dreamest not of, the which for sport's sake are, content to do the profession some grace, that would, if matters should be looked into, for their own, credit's sake, make all whole. I am joined with no, foot landrakers, no long staff sixpenny strikers. None of these mad mustachio purple hued malt worms. But with nobility and tranquility, 
burgomasters and great honours, such as can hold in, such as will, strike sooner than speak, and speak sooner than drink, and drink sooner than pray, and yet, zounds, I lie, for they pray continually to their saint, their commonwealth, or rather, not pray to her, but pray on her, for they ride up and down on her and make her their boots, chamberlain, what, the commonwealth their boots, will she hold, out water in foul way, gadshill, she will, she will, justice hath licked her, we, steel as in a castle, cockshaw, we have the receipt, of fern seed, we walk invisible, chamberlain, nay, by my faith, I think you are more beholding to, the knight than to fern seed for your walking invisible, gadshill, give me thy hand, thou shalt have a share in our, purchase, as I am a true man, chamberlain, nay, rather let me have it, as you are a false thief, Gadshill, go to, homo is a common name to all men, bid there, ostler bring my gelding out of the stable, farewell, you muddy knave, exeunt, scene two, the highway, near Gadshill, enter Prince Henry and Poins Poins, come, shelter, shelter, I have removed false stuffs, horse, and he frets like a gummed velvet, Prince Henry, stand close, enter false stuff, false stuff, Poins, Poins, and be hanged, Poins, Prince Henry, peace, ye fat kidney drascal, what a brawling dust, thou keep, false stuff, where's Poins, hell, Prince Henry, he is walked up to the top of the hill, I'll go seek him, false stuff, I am accursed to rob in that thief's company, there, rascal hath removed my horse, and tied him I know, not where, if I travel but four foot by the square, further afoot, I shall break my wind, well, I doubt, not but to die a fair death for all this, if I, scape hanging for killing that rogue, I have, forsworn his company hourly any time this two and, twenty years, and yet I am bewitched with their, rogue's company, if the rascal hath not given me, medicines to make me love him, I'll be hanged, it, could not be else, I have drunk medicines, poins, hal, a plague upon you both, bardolph, pito, I'll starve ere I'll rob a foot further, and we're, not as good a deed as drink, to turn true man and to, leave these rogues, I am the veriest varlet that, ever chewed with a tooth, eight yards of uneven, ground is three score and ten miles afoot with me, and the stony-hearted villains know it well enough, a plague upon it when thieves cannot be true one to another, they whistle, few, a plague upon you all, give me my horse, you, rogues, give me my horse, and be hanged, Prince Henry, peace, ye fat guts, lie down, lay thine near close, to the ground and list if thou canst hear the dread, of travellers, false stuff, have you any levers to lift me up again, being down, splud, I'll not bear my known flesh so far afoot, again for all the coin in thy father's exchequer, what a plague mean ye to colt me thus, Prince Henry, thou list, thou art not colted, thou art uncolted, false stuff, I prithee, good Prince Hal, help me to my horse, good king's son, Prince Henry, out, ye rogue, shall I be your ostler, false stuff, go, hang thyself in thine own air apparent, garters, if I be ta'en, I'll beach for this, and I, have not ballads made on you all and sung to filthy, tunes, let a cup of sack be my poison, when a jest, is so forward, and a foot too, I hate it, enter Gadshill, Bardolph and Pito, Gadshill, stand, false stuff, so I do, against my will, Poins, oh, tis our setter, I know his voice, Bardolph, what news, Bardolph, case ye, case ye, on with your wizards, there is, money of the king's coming down the hill, tis going, to the king's exchequer, false stuff, you lie, ye rogue, tis going to the king's tavern, Gadshill, there's enough to make us all, false stuff, to be hanged, Prince Henry, sirs, you four shall front them in the narrow lane, Ned Poins and I will walk lower, if they escape, from your encounter, then they light on us, Pito, how many be there of them, Gadshill, some eight or ten, false stuff, zounds, will they not rob us, Prince Henry, what, a coward, Sir John Paunch, false stuff, indeed, I am not John of Gaunt, your grandfather, but yet no coward, Hal, Prince Henry, well, we leave that to the proof, Poins, Sirrah Jack, thy horse stands behind the hedge, when thou needest him, there thou shalt find him, farewell, and stand fast, false stuff, now cannot I strike him, 
if I should be hanged, Prince Henry, Ned, where are our disguises, Poins, here, hard by, stand close, exeunt Prince Henry and Poins, Falstaff, now, my masters, happy man be his dole, say I, every man to his business, enter the travellers, first traveller, come, neighbour, the boy shall lead our horses down, the hill, we'll walk a foot a while, and ease our legs, thieves, stand, travellers, Jesus bless us, fall stuff, strike, down with them, cut the villains throats, ah, horse and caterpillars, bacon fed knaves, they, hate us youth, down with them, fleece them, travellers, oh, we are undone, both we and ours for ever, fall stuff, hang ye, gore-bellied knaves, are ye undone, no, ye, fat chuffs, I would your store were here, on, bacons, on, what, ye knaves, young men must live, you are grand jurors, are ye, we'll jury ye, faith, here they rob them and bind them, exeunt, re-enter Prince Henry and Poins, Prince Henry, the thieves have bound the true men, now could thou, and I rob the thieves and go merrily to London, it, would be argument for a week, laughter for a month, and a good jest for ever, Poins, stand close, I hear them coming, enter the thieves again, fall stuff, come, my masters, let us share, and then to horse, before day, and the prince and poins be not too, arrant cowards, there's no equity stirring, there's, no more valour in that poins than in a wild duck, prince Henry, your money, poins, villains, as they are sharing, the prince and poins set upon them, they all run away, and fall stuff, after a blow or two, runs away too, leaving the booty behind them, Prince Henry, got with much ease, now merrily to horse, the thieves are all scattered and possessed with fear, so strongly that they dare not meet each other, each takes his fellow for an officer, away, good Ned, Falstaff sweats to death, and lards the lean earth as he walks along, were he not for laughing, I should pity him, Poins, how the rogue roared, exeunt, scene three, Walkworth Castle, enter Hotspur, solace, reading a letter Hotspur, but for mine own part, my lord, I could be well, contented to be there, in respect of the love I bear, your house, he could be contented, why is he not, then, in respect of the love he bears our house, he shows in this, he loves his own barn better than, he loves our house, let me see some more, there, purpose you undertake his dangerous semicolon why, that's, certain, tis dangerous to take a cold, to sleep, to, drink, but I tell you, my lord fool, out of this, nettle, danger, we pluck this flower, safety, there, purpose you undertake is dangerous, the friends you, have named uncertain, the time itself unsorted, and, your whole plot too light for the counterpoise of so, great an opposition, say you so, say you so, I say, unto you again, you are a shallow cowardly hind, and, you lie, what a lack brain is this, by the lord, our plot is a good plot as ever was laid, our, friends true and constant, a good plot, good, friends, and full of expectation, an excellent plot, very good friends, what a frosty spirited rogue is, this, why, my lord of York commends the plot and their, general course of action, zounds, an I were now by, this rascal, I could brain him with his lady's fan, is there not my father, my uncle and myself, lord, Edmund Mortimer, my lord of York and Owen Blendower, is there not besides the Douglas? Have I not all, their letters to meet me in arms by the ninth of the, next month? And are they not some of them set, forward already? What a pagan rascal is this? An, infidel. Ha! You shall see now in very sincerity, of fear and cold heart, will he to the king and lay, open all our proceedings. Oh, I could divide myself, and go to buffets, for moving such a dish off skim milk with so honourable an action. Hang him. Let him tell the king, we are prepared. I will set, forward tonight, enter Lady Percy, how now, Kate? I must leave you within these two hours, Lady Percy, oh, my good lord, why are you thus alone, for what offence have I this fortnight been, a banished woman from my Harry's bed, tell me, sweet lord, what is't that takes from thee, thy stomach, pleasure and thy golden sleep? Why dost thou bend thine eyes upon the earth? And start so often when thou sitst alone? Why hast thou lost the fresh blood in thy cheeks? And given my treasures and my rights of thee, 
to thick eyed musing and curse melancholy, in thy faint slumbers I by thee have watched, and heard thee murmur tales of iron wars, speak terms of manage to thy bounding steed, cry courage, to the field, and thou hast talked, of sallies and retires, of trenches, tents, of palisados, frontiers, parapets, of basilisks, of cannon, culverin, of prisoners ransom and of soldiers slain, and all the currents of a heavy fight, thy spirit within thee hath been so at war, and thus hath so bestirred thee in thy sleep, that beads of sweat have stood upon thy brow, like bubbles in a late disturbed stream, and in thy face strange motions have appeared, such as we see when men restrain their breath, on some great sudden hest. Oh, what portents are these, some heavy business hath my lord in hand, and I must know it, else he loves me not. Hotspur, what, ho, enter servant, is Gilliams with the packet gone, servant, he is, my lord, an hour ago, Hotspur, hath butler brought those horses from the sheriff, servant, one horse, my lord, he brought even now, Hotspur, what horse, a roan, a crop here, is it not, servant, it is, my lord, Hotspur, that roan shall buy my throne, well, I will back him straight, O Esperance. Bid butler lead him forth into the park, exit servant, Lady Percy. But hear you, my lord, Hotspur, what sayst thou, my lady, Lady Percy, what is it carries you away, Hotspur, why, my horse, my love, my horse, Lady Percy, out, you mad-headed ape, a weasel hath not such a deal of spleen, as you are tossed with, in faith, I'll know your business, Harry, that I will, I fear my brother Mortimer doth stir, about his title, and hath sent for you, to line his enterprise, but if you go comma, hotspur, so far afoot, I shall be weary, love, Lady Percy, come, come, you paraquito, answer me, directly unto this question that I ask, in faith, I'll break thy little finger, Harry, and if thou wilt not tell me all things true, hotspur, away, away, you trifler, love, I love thee not, I care not for thee, Kate, this is no world, to play with mammoths and to tilt with lips, we must have bloody noses and cracked crowns, and pass them current too, gods me, my horse, what sayst thou, Kate, what wouldst thou, have with me, Lady Percy, do you not love me, do you not, indeed, well, do not then, for since you love me not, I will not love myself, do you not love me, nay, tell me if you speak in jest or number, Hotspur, come, wilt thou see me ride, and when I am on horseback, I will swear, I love thee infinitely. But hark you, Kate, I must not of you henceforth question me, whither I go, nor reason whereabout. Whither I must, I must, and, to conclude, this evening must I leave you, gentle Kate, I know you wise, but yet no farther wise, than Harry Percy's wife, constant you are, but yet a woman, and for secrecy. No lady closer for I well believe, thou wilt not utter what thou dost not know, and so far will I trust thee, gentle gate, Lady Percy, how? So far, Hotspur, not an inch further. But hark you, Kate, whither I go, thither shall you go too. Today will I set forth, tomorrow you, will this content you, Kate, Lady Percy, it must of force, exeunt, scene four. The Boar's Head Tavern, East Cheap. Enter Prince Henry and Poins Prince Henry, Ned, prithee, come out of that fat room, and lend me, thy hand to laugh a little, Poins, where hast been, hell, Prince Henry, with three or four loggerheads amongst three or four, score hogsheads, I have sounded the very, base string of humility, sirrah, I am sworn brother, to a leash of drawers, and can call them all by, their christen names, as Tom, Dick, and Francis. They take it already upon their salvation, that, though I be but the Prince of Wales, yet I am King, of courtesy, and tell me flatly I am no proud Jack. Like Falstaff, but a Corinthian, a lad of metal, a good boy, by the Lord, so they call me, and when I am King of England, I shall command all the good lads in East Cheap. They call drinking deep, dying, scarlet, and when you breathe in your watering, they cry hem, and bid you play it off. To conclude, I am so good a proficient in one quarter of an hour, that I can drink with any tinker in his own language, during my life. I tell thee, Ned, thou hast lost, much honour, that thou wert not with me in this sweet, 
action. But, sweet Ned, come to sweeten which name of, Ned, I give thee this penny worth of sugar, clapped, even now into my hand by a non kinker, one that, never spake other English in his life than eight, shillings and sixpence and you are welcome, with, this shrill addition, anon, anon, sir. Score a pint, of bastard in the half moon, or so. But, Ned, too, drive away the time till Falstaff come, I prithee. Do thou stand in some by room, while I question my, puny draw to what end he gave me the sugar, and do, thou never leave calling Francis, that his tale, to me may be nothing but anon. Step aside, and, I'll show thee a precedent, Poins, Francis, Prince Henry, thou art perfect, Poins, Francis, exit Poins, enter Francis, Francis, anon, anon, sir. Look down into the pomegranate, Ralph, Prince Henry, come hither, Francis, Francis, my lord, Prince Henry, how long hast thou to serve, Francis, Francis, forsooth, five years, and as much as two, points, within, Francis, Francis, anon, anon, sir, Prince Henry, five year, by lady, a long lease for the clinking, of pewter, but, Francis, darest thou be so valiant, as to play the coward with thy indenture and show it, a fair pair of heels and run from it, Francis, O oh Lord, sir, I'll be sworn upon all the books in, England, I could find in my heart, points, within, Francis, Francis, anon, sir, Prince Henry, how old art thou, Francis, Francis, let me see about my Coelmas next I shall be, points, within, Francis, Francis, anon, sir, pray stay a little, my lord, Prince Henry, nay, but hark you, Francis, for the sugar thou, gavest me, come it was a penny worth, waste not, Francis, O oh lord, I would it had been two, Prince Henry, I will give thee for it a thousand pound, ask me, when thou wilt, and thou shalt have it, points, within, Francis, Francis, anon, anon, Prince Henry, anon, Francis, no, Francis, but tomorrow, Francis, or, Francis, O oh Thursday, or indeed, Francis, when, thou wilt, but, Francis, Francis, my lord, Prince Henry, wilt thou rob this leathern jerkin, crystal button, not pated, agadring, puke stocking, cadiscata, smooth tongue, Spanish pouch comma, Francis, O oh lord, sir, who do you mean, Prince Henry, why, then, your brown bastard is your only drink, for look you, Francis, your white canvas doublet, will sully, in Barbary, sir, it cannot come to so much, Francis, what, sir, points, within, Francis, Prince Henry, away, you rogue, dost thou not hear them call, here they both call him, the draw stands amazed, not knowing which way to go, enter Vintner, Vintner, what, standest thou still, and hearest such a, calling, look to the guests within, exit Francis, my lord, old Sir John, with half a dozen more, ah, at the door, shall I let them in, Prince Henry, let them alone a while, and then open the door, exit Vintner, points, re-enter points, points, anon, anon, sir, Prince Henry, sirrah, Falstaff and the rest of the thieves are at, the door, shall we be merry, points, as merry as crickets, my lad, but hark ye, what, cunning match have you made with this jest of there, draw, Come, what's the issue, Prince Henry? I am now of all humours that have showed themselves, humours since the old days of Goodman Adam to the pupil age of this present twelve o'clock at midnight, re enter Francis. What's a clock, Francis? Francis, anon, anon, sir, exit, Prince Henry, that ever this fellow should have fewer words than a parrot, and yet the son of a woman. His industry is upstairs and downstairs, his eloquence the parcel of a reckoning. I am not yet of Percy's mind, there, Hotspur of the North, he that kills me some six or seven dozen of Scots at a breakfast, washes his hands, and says to his wife, Fie upon this quiet life. I want work. Oh my sweet Harry, says she, how many hast thou killed today? Give my own horse a drench, says he, and answers some, fourteen, an hour after, a trifle, a trifle. I, prithee, call in fall stuff, I'll play Percy, and, that damned brawn shall play Dame Mortimer his, wife, Rivo, 
says the drunkard. Call in ribs, call in tallow, enter Falstaff, Gadgehill, Bardolf, and Peto, Francis following with wine, poins, welcome, Jack, where hast thou been, Falstaff, a plague of all cowards, I say, and a vengeance too, marry, and our men. Give me a cup of sack, boy. Ere I, lead this life long, I'll so nether stocks and mend, them and foot them too. A plague of all cowards, give me a cup of sack, rogue. Is there no virtue extant? He drinks, Prince Henry, didst thou never see Titan kiss a dish of butter, pitiful hearted Titan, that melted at the sweet tail, of the sons? If thou didst, then behold that compound, false stuff, you rogue, here's lime in this sack too, there is, nothing but roguery to be found in villainous man. Yet a coward is worse than a cup of sack with lime, in it. A villainous coward. Go thy ways, old Jack. Die when thou wilt, if manhood, good manhood, be, not forgot upon the face of the earth, then am I a, shot and herring. There live not three good men, unhanged in England, and one of them is fat and, grows old. God help the while. A bad world, I say, I would I were a weaver, I could sing sums or any, thing. A plague of all cowards, I say still, Prince Henry, how now, wool sack? What mutter you, false stuff, a king's son? If I do not beat thee out of thy, kingdom with a dagger of lath, and drive all thy, subjects afore thee like a flock of wild geese, I'll never wear hair on my face more. You Prince of Wales, Prince Henry, why, you whore and round man, what's the matter, false stuff, are not you a coward? Answer me to that, and poins there, poins, zounds, ye fat paunch, and ye call me coward, by the, Lord, I'll stab thee, false stuff, I call thee coward. I'll see thee damned ere I call, thee coward, but I would give a thousand pound I, could run as fast as thou canst. You astrait, enough in the shoulders, you care not who sees your, back, call you that backing of your friends? A, plague upon such backing. Give me them that will, face me. Give me a cup of sack, I am a rogue, if I, drunk today, Prince Henry, a villain. Thy lips are scarce white since thou, drunkest last, false stuff, all's one for that, he drinks, a plague of all cowards, still say I, Prince Henry, what's the matter, false stuff, what's the matter? The before of us here have, ta'en a thousand pound this day morning, Prince Henry, where is it, Jack? Where is it, false stuff, where is it? Taken from us it is, a hundred upon, poor four of us, Prince Henry, what, a hundred, man, false stuff? I am a rogue, if I were not at half sword with a dozen of them two hours together. I have scaped by, miracle. I am eight times thrust through there, doublet, four through the hose, my buckler cut, through and through, my sword hacked like a hans or ek signum. I never dealt better since, I was a man, all would not do. A plague of all, cowards. Let them speak, if they speak more or less than truth, they are villains and the sons of darkness. Prince Henry, speak, sirs, how was it, Gadshill, we four set upon some dozen, false stuff, sixteen at least, my lord, Gadshill, and bound them, Peto, no, no, they were not bound, false stuff, you rogue, they were bound, every man of them, or I, am a Jew else, an Ebra Jew, Gadshill, as we were sharing, some six or seven fresh men set upon us, false stuff, and unbound the rest, and then come in the other, Prince Henry, what, fought you with them all, false stuff, all. I know not what you call all, but if I fought, not with fifty of them, I am a bunch of radish, if, there were not two or three and fifty upon poor old, Jack, then am I no two-legged creature, Prince Henry, pray God you have not murdered some of them, false stuff, nay, that's past praying for, I have peppered two, of them, two I am sure I have paid, two rogues, in buckram suits. I tell thee what, pal, if I tell, thee a lie, spit in my face, call me horse. Thou, knowest my old ward, here I lay and thus I bore my, point. Four ogs in buckram let drive at me, Prince Henry, what, four? Thou saidst but two even now, false stuff, four, pal, I tell thee four, points, a, a, he said four, false stuff, these four came all a front, and mainly thrust at, me. I made me no more ado but took all their seven, points in my target, thus, Prince Henry, seven? Why, there were but four even now, 
Falstaff, in Buckram, Poins, A, 4, in Buckram Suits, Falstaff, 7, by these hilts, or I am a villain else, Prince Henry, prithee, let him alone, we shall have more anon, Falstaff, dost thou hear me, Hal, Prince Henry, A, and mark thee too, Jack, Falstaff, do so, for it is worth the listening to. These nine, in Buckram that I told thee of, Prince Henry, so, two more already, Falstaff. Their points being broken, comma, points, down fell a hose, Falstaff, began to give me ground, but I followed me close, came in foot and hand, and with a thought seven of. The eleven I paid, Prince Henry, O oh monstrous. Eleven Buckram men grown out of two, Falstaff, but, as the devil would have it, three misbegotten, knaves in Kendall Green came at my back and let drive, at me, for it was so dark, Tal, that thou couldst, not see thy hand, Prince Henry, these lies are like their father that begets them, gross as a mountain, open, palpable. Why, thou, clay-brained guts, thou naughty pated fool, thou, whoreson, obscene, greased aloe catch, comma, false stuff, what, art thou mad? Art thou mad? Is not the truth, the truth, Prince Henry, why, how couldst thou know these men in Kendall, green, when it was so dark thou couldst not see thy, hand? Come, tell us your reason, what sayest thou to this, points, come, your reason, Jack, your reason, false stuff, what, upon compulsion? Zounds, and I were at there, strapado, or all the wrecks in the world, I would, not tell you on compulsion. Give you a reason on, compulsion. If reasons were as plentiful as, blackberries, I would give no man a reason upon, compulsion, I, Prince Henry, I'll be no longer guilty of this sin, this sanguine, coward, this bedpresser, this horseback breaker, this huge hill of flesh comma, false stuff, splood, you starveling, you elf's kin, you dried, neat tongue, you bull's peel, you stockfish. Oh, for breath to utter what is like thee. You, tailor's yard, you sheath, you bokeh, you vile, standing tuck, comma, Prince Henry, well, breathe a while, and then to it again, and, when thou hast tired thyself in base comparisons, hear me speak but this, points, Mark, Jack, Prince Henry, we two saw you four set on four and bound them, and, were masters of their wealth. Mark now, how a plain, tale shall put you down. Then did we two set on you, four, and, with a word, outfaced you from your, prize, and have it, yea, and can show it you herein. The house, and, false stuff, you carried your guts, away as nimbly, with as quick dexterity, and roared, for mercy and still run and roared, as ever I heard, bull calf. What a slave art thou, to hack thy sword, as thou hast done, and then say it was in fight, what trick, what device, what starting hole, canst, thou now find out to hide thee from this open and, apparent shame, points, come, let's hear, Jack, what trick hast thou now, false stuff, by the Lord, I knew ye as well as he that made ye, why, hear you, my masters, was it for me to kill the, heir apparent, should I turn upon the true prince, why, thou knowest I am as valiant as Hercules, but, beware instinct, the lion will not touch the true, prince, instinct is a great matter, I was now a, coward on instinct, I shall think the better of, myself and thee during my life, I for a valiant, lion, and thou for a true prince. But, by the Lord, lads, I am glad you have the money. Hostess, clap, to the doors, watch tonight, pray tomorrow, gallants, lads, boys, hearts of gold, all the titles, of good fellowship come to you. What, shall we be, merry? Shall we have a play extempore, Prince Henry, content, and the argument shall be thy running away, false stuff. Ah, no more of that, Tal, and thou lovest me, enter hostess, hostess, O oh Jesu, my lord the prince, Prince Henry, how now, my lady the hostess? What sayest thou to, me, hostess, marry, my lord, there is a nobleman of the court at, door would speak with you, he says he comes from, your father, Prince Henry. Give him as much as will make him a royal man, and, send him back again to my mother, false stuff. What manner of man is he? Hostess, an old man, false stuff, what doth gravity out of his bed at midnight? Shall, I give him his answer, Prince Henry, prithee, do, Jack, false stuff, faith, and I'll send him packing.
exit Falstaff, Prince Henry, now, sirs, by lady, you fought fair, so did you, Peto, so did you, Bardolph, you are lions too, you, ran away upon instinct, you will not touch the true, Prince, no, fie, Bardolph, faith, I ran when I saw others run, Prince Henry, faith, tell me now in earnest, how came Falstaff's, sword so hacked, Peto, why, he hacked it with his dagger, and said he would, swear truth out of England but he would make you, believe it was done in fight, and persuaded us to do the like, Bardolph, yea, and to tickle our noses with spear grass to, make them bleed, and then to beslubber our garments, with it and swear it was the blood of true men, I, did that I did not this seven year before, I blushed, to hear his monstrous devices, Prince Henry, a villain, thou stolest a cup of sack eighteen years, ago, and wert taken with the manor, and ever since, thou hast blushed extempore. Thou hadst fire and, sword on thy side, and yet thou rannest away, what, instinct hadst thou for it, Bardolph, my lord, do you see these meteors? Do you behold, these exhalations, Prince Henry, I do, Bardolph, what think you they portend, Prince Henry, hot livers and cold purses, Bardolph, collar, my lord, if rightly taken, Prince Henry, no, if rightly taken, halter, re-enter Falstaff, here comes lean Jack, here comes barebone, how now, my sweet creature of bombast, how long is to go, Jack, since thou sawest thine own knee, Falstaff, my own knee, when I was about thy years, pal, I was, not an eagle's talon in the waist, I could have, crept into any alderman's thumb ring, a plague of, sighing and grief, it blows a man up like a, bladder, there's villainous news abroad, here was, Sir John Bracy from your father, you must to the, court in the morning. That same mad fellow of there, North, Percy, and he of Wales, that gave them and there. Bastonado and made Lucifer cuckold and swore there, devil his true liegeman upon the cross of a Welsh, who what a plague call you him, Poins, oh, Glendower, Falstaff, Owen, Owen, the same, and his son-in-law Mortimer, and old Northumberland, and that sprightly Scot of, Scots, Douglas, that runs o horseback up a hill, perpendicular comma, Prince Henry, he that rides at high speed and with his pistol, kills a sparrow flying, Falstaff, you have hit it, Prince Henry, so did he never the sparrow, Falstaff, well, that rascal hath good metal in him, he will not run, Prince Henry, why, what a rascal art thou then, to praise him so, for running, Falstaff, o horseback, ye cuckoo, but afoot he will not budge a foot, Prince Henry, yes, Jack, upon instinct, Falstaff, I grant ye, upon instinct, well, he is there too, and one more ache, and a thousand blue caps more, Worcester is stolen away tonight, thy father's, beard is turned white with the news, you may buy, land now as cheap as stinking mackerel, Prince Henry, why, then, it is like, if there come a hot June and, this civil buffeting hold, we shall buy maidenheads, as they buy hobnails, by the hundreds, Falstaff, by the mass, lad, thou sayest true, it is like we, shall have good trading that way, but tell me, pal, art not thou horrible afeard, thou being, heir apparent, could the world pick thee out three, such enemies again as that fiend Douglas, that, spirit Percy, and that devil Glendower, art thou, not horribly afraid, doth not thy blood thrill at, it, Prince Henry, not a whit, I faith, I lack some of thy instinct, false stuff, well, thou wert be horribly chid tomorrow when thou, comest to thy father, if thou love me, practice an answer, Prince Henry, do thou stand for my father, and examine me upon their, particulars of my life, false stuff, shall I, content, this chair shall be my state, this dagger my scepter, and this cushion my crown, Prince Henry, thy state is taken for a joint stool, thy golden, scepter for a leaden dagger, and thy precious rich, crown for a pitiful bald crown, false stuff, well, and the fire of grace be not quite out of thee, now shalt thou be moved, give me a cup of sack too, make my eyes look red, that it may be thought I have, wept, for I must speak in passion, and I will do it, in King Cambyse's vein, Prince Henry, well, here is my leg, false stuff, and here is my speech, stand aside, nobility, hostess, O oh Jesu, this is excellent sport, I faith, false stuff, weep not, sweet queen, for trickling tears are vain, hostess, oh, the father, 
how he holds his countenance, false stuff, for God's sake, lords, convey my tristful queen, for tears do stop the floodgates of her eyes, hostess, O oh Jesu, he doth it as like one of these harlotry, players as ever I see, false stuff, peace, good pine pot, peace, good tickle brain, Harry, I do not only marvel where thou spendest thy, time, but also how thou art accompanied, for though, the chamomile, the more it is trodden on the faster, it grows, yet youth, the more it is wasted there, sooner it wears, that thou art my son, I have, partly thy mother's word, partly my own opinion, but chiefly villainous trick of thine eye and day, foolish hanging of thy nether lip, that doth warrant, me, if then thou be son to me, here lies the point, why, being son to me, art thou so pointed at, shall, the blessed son of heaven prove a misher and eat, blackberries, a question not to be asked, shall, the son of England prove a thief and take purses, a, question to be asked, there is a thing, Harry, which thou hast often heard of and it is known to, many in our land by the name of pitch, this pitch, as ancient writers do report, doth defile, so doth, the company thou keepest, for, Harry, now I do not, speak to thee in drink but in tears, not in, pleasure but in passion, not in words only, but in, woes also, and yet there is a virtuous man whom I, have often noted in thy company, but I know not his name, Prince Henry, what manner of man, and it like your majesty, false stuff, a goodly portly man, I faith, and a corpulent, of a, cheerful look, a pleasing eye and a most noble, carriage, and, as I think, his age some fifty, or, by a lady, inclining to three score, and now I, remember me, his name is false stuff, if that man, should be lewdly given, he deceiveth me, for, Harry, I see virtue in his looks, if then the tree may be, known by the fruit, as the fruit by the tree, then, peremptorily I speak it, there is virtue in that, false stuff, him keep with, the rest banish, and tell, me now, thou naughty varlet, tell me, where hast, thou been this month, Prince Henry, dost thou speak like a king, do thou stand for me, and I'll play my father, false stuff, depose me, if thou dost it half so gravely, so, majestically, both in word and matter, hang me up by, the heels for a rabbit sucker or a poulter's hair, Prince Henry, well, here I am set, false stuff, and here I stand, judge, my masters, Prince Henry, now, Harry, whence come you, false stuff, my noble lord, from East Cheap, Prince Henry, the complaints I hear of thee are grievous, false stuff, splood, my lord, they are false, nay, I'll tickle, ye for a young prince, I faith, Prince Henry, swearest thou, ungracious boy, henceforth ne'er look, on me, thou art violently carried away from grace, there is a devil haunts thee in the likeness of an, old fat man, a ton of man is thy companion, why, dost thou converse with that trunk of humours, that, bolting hutch of beastliness, that swollen parcel, of dropsies, that huge bombard of sack, that stuffed, cloak bag of guts, that roasted manning tree ox with, the pudding in his belly, that reverend vice, that, grey iniquity, that father ruffian, that vanity in, years, wherein is he good, but to taste sack and, drink it, wherein neat and cleanly, but to carve a, capon and eat it, wherein cunning, but in craft, wherein crafty, but in villainy, wherein villainous, but in all things, wherein worthy, but in nothing, false stuff, I would your grace would take me with you, whom, means your grace, Prince Henry, that villainous abominable misleader of youth, false stuff, that old white bearded Satan, false stuff, my lord, the man I know, Prince Henry, I know thou dost, false stuff, but to say I know more harm in him than in myself, were to say more than I know, that he is old, there, more the pity, his white hairs do witness it, but, that he is, saving your reverence, a whoremaster, that I utterly deny, if sack and sugar be a fault, God help the wicked, if to be old and merry be a, sin, then many an old host that I know is damned, if, to be fat be to be hated, then Pharaoh's lean kine, are to be loved, no, my good lord, banish Peto, banish Bardolph, banish Poins, but for sweet Jack, false stuff, kind Jack false stuff, true Jack false stuff, valiant Jack false stuff, and therefore more valiant, being, as he is, old Jack false stuff, banish not him, 
thy Harry's company, banish not him thy Harry's company, banish plump Jack, and banish all the world, Prince Henry, I do, I will, a knocking heard, exeunt hostess, Francis, and Bardolph, re-enter Bardolph, running, Bardolph, oh, my lord, my lord, the sheriff with the most, monstrous watches at the door, Falstaff, out, ye rogue, play out the play, I have much to, say in the behalf of that Falstaff, re-enter the hostess, hostess, oh Jesu, my lord, my lord, Prince Henry, hey, hey, the devil rides upon a fiddlestick, what's the matter, hostess, the sheriff and all the watch are at the door, they, are come to search the house, shall I let them in, Falstaff, dost thou hear, hell, never call a true piece of, gold a counterfeit, thou art essentially mad, without seeming so, Prince Henry, and thou a natural coward, without instinct, Falstaff, I deny your major, if you will deny the sheriff, so, if not, let him enter, if I become not a cart, as well as another man, a plague on my bringing up, I hope I shall as soon be strangled with a halter as another, Prince Henry, go, hide thee behind the arras, the rest walk up, above, now, my masters, for a true face and good, conscience, false stuff, both which I have had, but their date is out, and, therefore I'll hide me, Prince Henry, call in the sheriff, exeunt all except Prince Henry and Pito, enter sheriff and the carrier, now, master sheriff, what is your will with me, sheriff, first, pardon me, my lord, a hue and cry, hath followed certain men unto this house, Prince Henry, what men, sheriff, one of them island well known, my gracious lord, a gross fat man, carrier, as a fat as butter, Prince Henry, the man, I do assure you, is not here, for I myself at this time have employed him, and, sheriff, I will engage my word to thee, that I will, by tomorrow dinner time, send him to answer thee, or any man, for anything he shall be charged with all, and so let me entreat you leave the house, sheriff, I will, my lord, there are two gentlemen, have in this robbery lost three hundred marks, Prince Henry, it may be so, if he have robbed these men, he shall be answerable, and so farewell, Sheriff, good night, my noble lord, Prince Henry, I think it is good morrow, is it not, Sheriff, indeed, my lord, I think it be two o'clock, exeunt Sheriff and carrier, Prince Henry, this oily rascal is known as well as Paul's, go, call him forth, Pito. Falstaff exclamation mark fast asleep behind the arras, and, snorting like a horse, Prince Henry, hark, how hard he fetches breath. Search his pockets, he searcheth his pockets, and findeth certain papers. What hast thou found, Pito? Nothing but papers, my lord, Prince Henry, let's see what they be, read them, Pito, reads, item, a capon. Twos. 2d, item, source. 4d, item, sack, two gallons, fives, eight d, item, anchovies and sack after supper, twos, six d, item, bread, ob, prince henry, o oh monstrous, but one half penny worth of bread to, this intolerable deal of sack, what there is else, keep close, we'll read it at more advantage, there, let him sleep till day, I'll to the court in there, morning, we must all to the wars, and thy place, shall be honourable, I'll procure this fat rogue a, charge of foot, and I know his death will be a, march of twelfth score. The money shall be paid, back again with advantage. Be with me betimes in, the morning, and so, good morrow, Pito, exeunt, Pito, good morrow, good my lord, act three, scene I, banger, the archdeacon's house, enter Hotspur, Worcester, Mortimer, and Glendower Mortimer. These promises are fair the part is sure, and our induction full of prosperous hope, Hotspur, Lord Mortimer, and Cousin Glendower, will you sit down, and Uncle Worcester, a plague upon it, I have forgot the map, Glendower, no, here it is, sit, Cousin Percy, sit, good Cousin Hotspur, for by that name as oft as Lancaster, doth speak of you, his cheek looks pale and with, a rising sigh he wisheth you in heaven, Hotspur, and you in hell, as oft as he hears Owen Glendower spoke of, Glendower, I cannot blame him, at my nativity, the front of heaven was full of fiery shapes, of burning cressets, and at my birth, the frame and huge foundation of the earth, shaked like a coward, hot spur, why, so it would have done at the same season, if, 
your mother's cat had but kittened, though yourself, had never been born, Gladauer, I say the earth did shake when I was born, Hotspur, and I say the earth was not of my mind. If you suppose as fearing you it shook, Gladauer. The heavens were all on fire, the earth did tremble, Hotspur, oh, then the earth shook to see the heavens on fire. And not in fear of your nativity, diseased nature oftentimes breaks forth, in strange eruptions, oft the teeming earth, is with a kind of colic pinched and vexed, by the imprisoning of unruly wind, within her womb, which, for enlargement striving, shakes the old beldam earth and topples down, steeples and moss-grown towers. At your birth, our grandam earth, having this distemperature, in passion shook, Gladauer, cousin, of many men, I do not bear these crossings. Give me leave, to tell you once again that at my birth, the front of heaven was full of fiery shapes. The goats ran from the mountains, and the herds, were strangely clamorous to the frighted fields, these signs have marked me extraordinary, and all the courses of my life do show, I am not in the role of common men, where is he living, clipped in with the sea, that chides the banks of England, Scotland, Wales, which calls me pupil, or hath read to me, and bring him out that is but woman's son, can trace me in the tedious ways of art, and hold me pace in deep experiments, Hotspur, I think there's no man speaks better Welsh, I'll to dinner, Mortimer, peace, cousin Percy, you will make him mad, Gladauer. I can call spirits from the vasty deep, Hotspur, why, so can I, or so can any man. But will they come when you do call for them, Gladauer, why, I can teach you, cousin, to command, the devil, Hotspur, and I can teach thee, Cos, to shame the devil, by telling truth, tell truth and shame the devil, if thou have power to raise him, bring him hither, and I'll be sworn I have power to shame him hence, oh, while you live, tell truth and shame the devil, Mortimer, come, come, no more of this unprofitable chat, Gladauer, three times hath Henry Bling broke made head, against my power, thrice from the banks of Y, and sandy bottomed seven have I sent him, bootless home and weather beaten back, Hotspur, home without boots, and in foul weather too, how scapes he agues, in the devil's name, Gladauer, come, here's the map, shall we divide our right, according to our threefold order Tain, Mortimer, the archdeacon hath divided it, into three limits very equally, England, from Trent and Severn hitherto, by south and east is to my part assigned, all westward, Wales beyond the Severn sure, and all the fertile land within that bound, to Owen Glendower, and, dear cos, to you, the remnant northward, lying off from Trent, and our indentures tripartite are drawn, which being sealed interchangeably, a business that this night may execute, tomorrow, cousin Percy, you and I, and my good lord of Worcester will set forth, to meet your father and the Scottish power, as is appointed us, at Shrewsbury, my father Glendower is not ready yet, not shall we need his help these fourteen days, within that space you may have drawn together, your tenants, friends and neighbouring gentlemen, Glendower, a shorter time shall send me to you, lords, and in my conduct shall your ladies come, from whom you now must steal and take no leave, for there will be a world of water shed, upon the parting of your wives and you, Hotspur, methinks my moiety, north from Burton here, in quantity equals not one of yours, see how this river comes me cranking in, and cuts me from the best of all my land, a huge half moon, a monstrous cantle out, I'll have the current in this place stand up, and here the smug and silver trench shall run, in a new channel, fair and evenly, it shall not wind with such a deep indent, to rob me of so rich a bottom here, Gladauer, not wind? It shall, it must, you see it doth, Mortimer, yea, but, mark how he bears his course, and runs me up, with like advantage on the other side, gelding the opposed continent as much, as on the other side it takes from you, Earl of Worcester, yea, but a little charge will drench him here, and on this north side win this cape of land, and then he runs straight and even, Hotspur, I'll have it so, a little charge will do it, Gladauer, I'll not have it altered, Hotspur, will not you, Gladauer, no, nor you shall not, Hotspur, who shall say me nay, Gladauer, why, that will I, Hotspur, let me not understand you, then, speak it in Welsh, Gladauer, I can speak English, Lord, as well as you, for I was trained up in the English court, where, being but young, I framed to the harp, many an English ditty lovely well, 
and gave the tongue a helpful ornament, a virtue that was never seen in you, Hotspur, Mary. And I am glad of it with all my heart. I had rather be a kitten and cry mew, than one of these same meter ballad mongers. I had rather hear a brazen canstick turned, or a dry wheel grate on the axle tree, and that would set my teeth nothing on edge, nothing so much as mincing poetry. Tis like the forced gait of a shuffling nag, Glendower, come, you shall have Trent turned, Hotspur, I do not care, I'll give thrice so much land, to any well-deserving friend, but in the way of bargain, mark ye me, I'll cavil on the ninth part of a hair, are the indentures drawn? Shall we be gone, Glendower? The moon shines fair, you may away by night. I'll haste the writer and with all, break with your wives of your departure hence. I am afraid my daughter will run mad. So much she ditteth on her Mortimer, exit Glendower, Mortimer, fie, cousin Percy. How you cross my father, Hotspur, I cannot choose, sometime he angers me, with telling me of the mold warp and the ant, of the dreamer Merlin and his prophecies, and of a dragon and a finless fish a clip-winged griffin and a molten raven, a couching lion and ramping cat, and such a deal of skimble scamble stuff, as puts me from my faith. I tell you what, he held me last night at least nine hours, in reckoning up the several devil's names, that were his lackeys, I cried hum, and well, go to. But marked him not a word. Oh, he is as tedious, as a tired horse, a railing wife, worse than a smoky house, I had rather live with cheese and garlic in a windmill, far, than feed on cats and have him talk to me, in any summer house in Christendom, Mortimer, in faith, he is a worthy gentleman, exceedingly well read, and profited, in strange concealments, valiant as a lion, and as wondrous affable and as bountiful, as mines of India. Shall I tell you, cousin, he holds your temper in a high respect, and curbs himself even of his natural scope, when you come cross his humour, faith, he does, I warrant you, that man is not alive, might so have tempted him as you have done, without the taste of danger and reproof. But do not use it oft, let me entreat you, Earl of Worcester, in faith, my lord, you are too willful blame. And since your coming hither have done enough, to put him quite beside his patience, you must needs learn, lord, to amend this fault. Though sometimes it show greatness, courage, blood, comma, and that's the dearest grace it renders you, comma yet oftentimes it doth present harsh rage, defect of manners, want of government, pride, haughtiness, opinion and disdain, the least of which haunting a nobleman, looseth men's hearts and leaves behind a stain, upon the beauty of all parts besides, beguiling them of commendation, hotspur, well, I am schooled, good manners be your speed, here come our wives, and let us take our leave, re-enter Glendower with the ladies, Mortimer, this is the deadly spite that angers me, my wife can speak no English, I know Welsh, Glendower, my daughter weeps, she will not part with you, she'll be a soldier too, she'll to the wars, Mortimer, good father, tell her that she and my aunt Percy, shall follow in your conduct speedily, Glendower speaks to her in Welsh, and she answers him in the same, Glendower, she is desperate here, a peevish self-wind harlotry, one that no persuasion can do good upon, the lady speaks in Welsh, Mortimer, I understand thy looks, that pretty Welsh, which thou pourst down from these swelling heavens, I am too perfect in, and, but for shame, in such a parley should I answer thee, the lady speaks again in Welsh, I understand thy kisses and thou mine, and that's a feeling disputation. But I will never be a truant, love, till I have learned thy language, for thy tongue, makes Welsh as sweet as it is highly bent, sung by a fair queen in a summer's bower, with ravishing division, to her lute, Glendower, nay, if you melt, then will she run mad, the lady speaks again in Welsh, Mortimer, oh, I am ignorance itself in this, Glendower, she bids you on the wanton rushes lay you down, and rest your gentle head upon her lap, and she will sing the song that pleaseth you, and on your eyelids crown the god of sleep, charming your blood with pleasing heaviness, making such difference twixt wake and sleep, as is the difference betwixt day and night, the hour before the heavenly harnessed team, begins his golden progress in the east, Mortimer, with all my heart I'll sit and hear her sing. By that time will our book, I think, be drawn, Glendower, do so. And those musicians that shall play to you, hang in the air a thousand leagues from hence. And straight they shall be here, sit, and attend, Hotspur, come, 
Kate, thou art perfect in lying down, come, quick, quick, that I may lay my head in thy lap, Lady Percy, go, ye giddy goose, the music plays, Hotspur, now I perceive the devil understands Welsh, and tis no marvel he is so humorous, by lady, he is a good musician, Lady Percy, then should you be nothing but musical for you are, altogether governed by humours, lie still, ye thief, and hear the lady sing in Welsh, Hotspur, I had rather hear lady, my brook, howl in Irish, Lady Percy, wouldst thou have thy head broken, Hotspur, number, Lady Percy, then be still, Hotspur, neither semicolon tis a woman's fault, Lady Percy, now God help thee, Hotspur, to the Welsh lady's bed, Lady Percy, what's that, Hotspur, peace, she sings, here the lady sings a Welsh song, Hotspur, come, Kate, I'll have your song too, Lady Percy, not mine, in good sooth, Hotspur, not yours, in good sooth, Heart, you swear like a, comfort maker's wife, not you, in good sooth, and, as true as I live, and as God shall mend me, and, as sure as day, and givest such sarsnit surety for thy oaths, as if thou never walkst further than Finsbury, swear me, Kate, like a lady as thou art, a good mouth filling oath, and leave in sooth, and such protest of pepper gingerbread, to velvet guards and Sunday citizens, come, sing, Lady Percy, I will not sing, Hotspur, tis the next way to turn tailor, or be red breast, teacher, and the indentures be drawn, I'll away, within these two hours, and so, come in when ye will, exit, Glendower, come, come, Lord Mortimer, you are as slow, as hot Lord Percy is on fire to go, by this our book is drawn, we'll but seal, and then to horse immediately, Mortimer, with all my heart, exeunt, scene two, London, the palace, enter King Henry IV, Prince Henry, and others King Henry IV, lords, give us leave, the Prince of Wales and I, must have some private conference, but be near at hand, for we shall presently have need of you, exeunt lords, I know not whether God will have it so, for some displeasing service I have done, that, in his secret doom, out of my blood, he'll breed revengement and a scourge for me, but thou dost in thy passages of life, make me believe that thou art only marked, for the hot vengeance and the rod of heaven, to punish my misreadings, tell me else, could such inordinate and low desires, such poor, such bare, such lewd, such mean attempts, such barren pleasures, rude society, as thou art matched with all and grafted to, accompany the greatness of thy blood, and hold their level with thy princely heart, Prince Henry, so please your majesty, I would I could, quit all offences with as clear excuse, as well as I am doubtless I can purge, myself of many I am charged with all, yet such extenuation let me beg, as, in reproof of many tales devised, which oft the ear of greatness needs must hear, by smiling pick thanks and base newsmongers, I may, for some things true, wherein my youth, hath faulty wandered and irregular, find pardon on my true submission, King Henry IV, God pardon thee. Yet let me wonder, Harry, at thy affections, which do hold a wing, quite from the flight of all thy ancestors, thy place in council thou hast rudely lost, which by thy younger brother is supplied, and art almost an alien to the hearts, of all the court and princes of my blood, the hope and expectation of thy time is ruined, and the soul of every man, prophetically doth forthink thy fall, had I so lavish of my presence been, so common hackneyed in the eyes of men, so stale and cheap to vulgar company, opinion, that did help me to the crown, had still kept loyal to possession, and left me in reputeless banishment, a fellow of no mark nor likelihood, by being seldom seen, I could not stir, but like a comet I was wondered at, that men would tell their children this is he, others would say where, which is bling broke, and then I stole all courtesy from heaven, and dressed myself in such humility, that I did pluck allegiance from men's hearts, loud shouts and salutations from their mouths, even in the presence of the crowned king, thus did I keep my person fresh and new, my presence, like a robe pontifical, ne'er seen but wondered at, and so my state, seldom but sumptuous, showed like a feast, and won by rareness such solemnity, the skipping king, he ambled up and down, with slow jesters and rash bavin wits, soon kindled and soon burned, carded his state, mingled his royalty with capering fools, had his great name profaned with their scorns, 
and gave his countenance, against his name. To laugh at jibing boys and stand the push, of every beardless vain comparative. Grew a companion to the common streets. Infoffed himself to popularity. That, being daily swallowed by men's eyes, they surfeited with honey and began, to loathe the taste of sweetness, whereof a little, more than a little is by much too much, so when he had occasion to be seen, he was but as the cuckoo is in June, heard, not regarded, seen, but with such eyes, as, sick and blunted with community, afford no extraordinary gaze, such as is bent on sun-like majesty, when it shines seldom in admiring eyes, but rather drowsed and hung their eyelids down, slept in his face and rendered such aspect, as cloudy men use to their adversaries. Being with his presence glutted, gorged and full, and in that very line, Harry, standest thou, for thou hast lost thy princely privilege, with vile participation, not an eye, but is a weary of thy common sight, save mine, which hath desired to see thee more, which now doth that I would not have it do, make blind itself with foolish tenderness, Prince Henry, I shall hereafter, my thrice gracious lord, be more myself, King Henry for, for all the world, as thou art to this hour was Richard then, when I from France set foot at Travensburg, and even as I was then is Percy now, now, by my sceptre and my soul to boot, he hath more worthy interest to the state, than thou the shadow of succession, for of no right, nor colour like to right, he doth fill fields with harness in the realm, turns head against the lion's arm jaws, and, being no more in debt to years than thou, leads ancient lords and reverend bishops on, to bloody battles and to bruising arms, what never dying honour hath he got, against renowned Douglas, whose high deeds, whose hot incursions and great name in arms, holds from all soldiers chief majority, and military title capital, through all the kingdoms that acknowledge Christ, thrice hath this hot spur, Mars in swathling clothes, this infant warrior, in his enterprises, discomfited great Douglas, ta'en him once, enlarged him and made a friend of him, to fill the mouth of deep defiance up, and shake the peace and safety of our throne, and what say you to this? Percy, Northumberland, the Archbishop's Grace of York, Douglas, Mortimer, capitulate against us and are up, but wherefore do I tell these news to thee, why, Harry, do I tell thee of my foes, which art my nearest and dearest enemy, thou that art like enough, through vassal fear, base inclination and the start of spleen, to fight against me under Percy's pay, to dog his heels and curtsy at his frowns, to show how much thou art degenerate, Prince Henry, do not think so, you shall not find it so, and God forgive them that so much have swayed, your majesty's good thoughts away from me, I will redeem all this on Percy's head, and in the closing of some glorious day, be bold to tell you that I am your son, when I will wear a garment all of blood, and stain my favours in a bloody mask, which, washed away, shall scour my shame with it, and that shall be the day, when e'er it lights, that this same child of honour and renown, this gallant hotspur, this all-praised knight, and your unthought of Harry chance to meet, for every honour sitting on his helm, would they were multitudes, and on my head, my shame's redoubled, for the time will come, that I shall make this northern youth exchange, his glorious deeds for my indignities, Percy is but my factor, good my lord, to engross up glorious deeds on my behalf, and I will call him to so strict account, that he shall render every glory up, yea, even the slightest worship of his time, or I will tear the reckoning from his heart, this, in the name of God, I promise here, the which if he be pleased I shall perform, I do beseech your majesty may salve, the long grown wounds of my intemperance, if not, the end of life cancels all bands, and I will die a hundred thousand deaths, ere break the smallest parcel of this vow, King Henry IV, a hundred thousand rebels die in this, thou shalt have charge and sovereign trust herein, enter Blunt, how now, good Blunt, thy looks are full of speed, Sir Walter Blunt, so hath the business that I come to speak of, Lord Mortimer of Scotland hath sent word, that Douglas and the English rebels met, the eleventh of this month at Shrewsbury, a mighty and a fearful head they are, if promises be kept on every hand, as ever offered foul play in the state, King Henry IV, the Earl of Westmoreland set forth today, with him my son, Lord John of Lancaster, for this advertisement is five days old, on Wednesday next, Harry, you shall set forward, on Thursday we ourselves will march, our meeting, is Bridgine North, and, Harry, you shall march, 
through Gloucestershire, by which account, our business valued, some twelve days hence, our general forces at Bridgy North shall meet, our hands are full of business, let's away, advantage feeds him fat, while men delay, exeunt, scene three, East Cheap, the boar's head Devon, enter Falstaff and Bardolph, Falstaff, Bardolph, am I not fallen away vilely since this last, action? Do I not bait? Do I not dwindle? Why my, skin hangs about me like an like an old lady's loose, gown, I am withered like an old apple John. Well, I'll repent, and that suddenly, while I am in some, liking, I shall be out of heart shortly, and then I, shall have no strength to repent. And I have not, forgotten what the inside of a church is made of, I, am a peppercorn, a brewer's horse, the inside of a, church. Company, villainous company, hath been there, spoil of me, Bardolph, Sir John, you are so fretful, you cannot live long, false stuff, why, there is it, come sing me a bawdy song, make, me merry. I was as virtuously given as a gentleman, need to be, virtuous enough, swore little, diced not, above seven times a week, went to a bawdy house once, in a quarter of an hour, paid money that I, borrowed, three or four times, lived well and in, good compass, and now I live out of all order, out, of all compass, Bardolph, why, you are so fat, Sir John, that you must needs, be out of all compass, out of all reasonable, compass, Sir John, false stuff, do thou amend thy face, and I'll amend my life, thou art our admiral, thou bearest the lanterning, the poop, but tis in the nose of thee, thou art the, knight of the burning lamp, Bardolph, why, Sir John, my face does you no harm, false stuff, no, I'll be sworn, I make as good use of it as many, a man doth of a death's head or a memento mori, I, never see thy face but I think upon hellfire and, dives that lived in purple, for there he is in his, robes, burning, burning, if thou wert any way, given to virtue, I would swear by thy face, my oath, should be by this fire, that's God's angel, but, thou art altogether given over, and wert indeed, but, for the light in thy face, the son of utter, darkness, when thou rannest up Gadshill in there, night to catch my horse, if I did not think thou, hadst been an ignis fatuous or a ball of wildfire, there's no purchase in money, oh, thou art a, perpetual triumph, an everlasting bonfire light, thou hast saved me a thousand marks in links and, torches, walking with thee in the night betwixt, tavern and tavern, but the sack that thou hast, drunk me would have bought me lights as good cheap, at the dearest chandlers in Europe, I have, maintained that salamander of yours with fire any, time this two and thirty years, God reward me for, it, Bardolph, splood, I would my face were in your belly, false stuff, God a mercy, so should I be sure to be heart burned, enter hostess, how now, dame partly the hen, have you inquired, yet who picked my pocket, hostess, why, Sir John, what do you think, Sir John, do you, think I keep thieves in my house, I have searched, I have inquired, so has my husband, man by man, boy, by boy, servant by servant, the tithe of a hair, was never lost in my house before, false stuff, ye lie, hostess, Bardolph was shaved and lost many, a hair, and I'll be sworn my pocket was picked, go, too, you are a woman, go, hostess, who, I, no, I defy thee, God's light, I was never, called so in mine own house before, false stuff, go to, I know you well enough, hostess, no, Sir John, you do not know me, Sir John, I know, you, Sir John, you owe me money, Sir John, and now, you pick a quarrel to beguile me of it, I bought, you a dozen of shirts to your back, false stuff, Dallas, filthy Dallas, I had given them away to, baker's wives, and they have made bolters of them, hostess, now, as I am a true woman, Holland of eight, shillings an ell, you owe money here besides, Sir, John, for your diet and by drinkings, and money lent, you, four and twenty pound, false stuff, he had his part of it, let him pay, hostess, he, alas, he is poor, he hath nothing, false stuff, how, poor, look upon his face, what call you rich, let them coin his nose, let them coin his cheeks, ill not pay a denier, what, will you make a yunker, of me, shall I not take mine case in mine in but I, shall have my pocket picked. I have lost a, seal ring of my grandfather's worth forty mark, 
Hostess, oh Jesu, I have heard the prince tell him, I know not, how oft, that ring was copper, false stuff, how? The prince is a jack, a sneak cop, splud, and he were here, I would cudgel him like a dog, if he would say so. Enter Prince Henry and Peto, marching, and Falstaff meets them playing on his truncheon like a life, how now, lad? Is the wind in that door, I faith, must we all march, Bardolph, yea, two and two, Newgate fashion, hostess, my lord, I pray you, hear me, Prince Henry, what sayest thou, mistress quickly? How doth thy, husband? I love him well, he is an honest man, hostess, good my lord, hear me. False stuff, prithee, let her alone, and list to me, Prince Henry, what sayest thou, Jack, false stuff, the other night I fell asleep here behind the arras, and had my pocket picked, this house is turned, bawdy house, they pick pockets, Prince Henry, what didst thou lose, Jack, false stuff, wilt thou believe me, hell, three or four bonds of, forty pound apiece, and a seal ring of my, grandfather's, Prince Henry, a trifle, some eight penny matter, hostess, so I told him, my lord, and I said I heard your, grace say so, and, my lord, he speaks most vilely, of you, like a foul-mouthed man as he is, and said, he would cudgel you, Prince Henry, what? He did not, hostess, there's neither faith, truth, nor womanhood in me else, false stuff, there's no more faith in thee than in a stewed, prune, nor no more truth in thee than in a drawn, fox, and for womanhood, Maid Marian may be there, deputy's wife of the war to thee. Go, you thing, go, hostess, say, what thing? What thing, false stuff, what thing? Why, a thing to thank God on, hostess, I am no thing to thank God on, I would thou, shouldst know it, I am an honest man's wife, and, setting thy knighthood aside, thou art a knave to, call me so, false stuff, setting thy womanhood aside, thou art a beast to say. Otherwise, hostess, say, what beast, thou knave, thou, false stuff, what beast? Why, an otter, Prince Henry, an otter, Sir John. Why an otter, false stuff, why, she's neither fish nor flesh, a man knows not, where to have her, hostess, thou art an unjust man in saying so, thou or any, man knows where to have me, thou knave, thou, Prince Henry, thou sayest true, hostess and he slanders thee most grossly, hostess, so he doth you, my lord, and said this other day you, ought him a thousand pound, Prince Henry, sirrah, do I owe you a thousand pound, false stuff, a thousand pound, ha, a million, thy love is worth, a million, thou owest me thy love, hostess, nay, my lord, he called you Jack, and said he would, cudgel you, false stuff, did I, Bardolph, Bardolph, indeed, Sir John, you said so, false stuff, yea, if he said my ring was copper, Prince Henry, I say tis copper, darest thou be as good as thy word now, false stuff, why, pal, thou knowest, as thou art but man, I dare, but as thou art prince, I fear thee as I fear the, roaring of a lion's whelp, Prince Henry, and why not as the lion, false stuff, the king is to be feared as the lion, dost thou, think I fear thee as I fear thy father, nay, I do, I pray God my girdle break, Prince Henry, oh, if it should, how would thy guts fall about thy, knees, but, sirrah, there's no room for faith, truth, nor honesty in this bosom of thine, it is all, filled up with guts and midriff, charge an honest, woman with picking thy pocket, why, thou whore essen, impudent, embossed rascal, if there were anything in, thy pocket but tavern reckonings, memorandums of, bawdy houses, and one poor penny worth of, sugar candy to make thee long-winded, if thy pocket, were enriched with any other injuries but these, I, am a villain, and yet you will stand to, if, you will, not pocket a prong, art thou not ashamed, false stuff, dost thou hear, hell, thou knowest in the state of, innocency Adam fell, and what should poor Jack, false stuff do in the days of villainy, thou sest I, have more flesh than another man, and therefore more, frailty. You confess then, you picked my pocket, Prince Henry, it appears so by the story, false stuff, hostess, I forgive thee, go, make ready breakfast. Love thy husband, look to thy servants, cherish thy, guests, thou shalt find me tractable to any honest, reason, 
thou sest I am pacified still. Nay, prithee, be gone, exit hostess, now Hal, to the news at court, for the robbery? Lad, how is that answered, Prince Henry, oh, my sweet beef, I must still be good angel too, thee, the money is paid back again, false stuff, oh, I do not like that paying back, tis a double labor, Prince Henry, I am good friends with my father and may do anything, false stuff, rob me the exchequer the first thing thou doest, and, do it with unwashed hands too, Bardolph, do, my lord, Prince Henry, I have procured thee, Jack, a charge of foot, false stuff, I would it had been of horse. Where shall I find, one that can steal well? Oh for a fine thief, of their, age of two and twenty or thereabouts. I am, heinously unprovided. Well, God be thanked for, these rebels, they offend none but the virtuous, I, Lord them, I praise them, Prince Henry, Bardolph, Bardolph, my lord, Prince Henry, go bear this letter to Lord John of Lancaster, to my, brother John, this to my lord of Westmoreland, exit Bardolph, go, Peto, to horse, to horse, for thou and I have, thirty miles to ride yet ere dinner time, exit Peto, Jack, meet me tomorrow in the temple hall at two, o'clock in the afternoon, the shalt thou know thy charge, and there receive, money and order for their furniture, the land is burning, Percy stands on high, and either we or they must lower lie, exit Prince Henry, false stuff, rare words, brave world, hostess, my breakfast, come, oh, I could wish this tavern were my drum, exit, act four, scene I, the rebel camp near Shrewsbury, enter Hotspur, Worcester, and Douglas Hotspur, well said, my noble Scot, if speaking truth, in this fine age were not thought flattery, such attribution should the Douglas have, as not a soldier of this season's stamp, should go so general current through the world, by God, I cannot flatter, I do defy, the tongues of soothers, but a braver place, in my heart's love hath no man than yourself, nay, task me to my word, approve me, Lord, Earl of Douglas, thou art the king of honour, no man so potent breathes upon the ground, but I will beard him, Hotspur, do so, and tis well, enter a messenger with letters, what letters hast thou the question mark I can but thank you, messenger, these letters come from your father, Hotspur, letters from him, why comes he not himself, messenger, he cannot come, my lord, he is grievous sick, Hotspur, zounds, how has he the leisure to be sick, in such a rustling time, who leads his power, under whose government come they along, messenger, his letters bear his mind, not I, my lord, Earl of Worcester, I prithee, tell me, doth he keep his bed, messenger, he did, my lord, four days ere I set forth, and at the time of my departure thence, he was much feared by his physicians, Earl of Worcester, I would the state of time had first been whole, ere he by sickness had been visited, his health was never better worth than now, Hotspur, sick now, droop now, this sickness doth infect, the very lifeblood of our enterprise, tis catching hither, even to our camp, he writes me here, that inward sickness, and that his friends by deputation could not, so soon be drawn, nor did he think it meet, to lay so dangerous and dear a trust, on any soul removed but on his own, yet doth he give us bold advertisement, that with our small conjunction we should on, to see how fortune is disposed to us, for, as he writes, there is no quailing now, because the king is certainly possessed, of all our purposes, what say you to it, Earl of Worcester, your father's sickness is a maim to us, Hotspur, a perilous gash, a very limb lopped off, and yet, in faith, it is not, his present want, seems more than we shall find it, were it good, to set the exact wealth of all our states, all at one cast, to set so rich a main, on the nice hazard of one doubtful hour, it were not good, for therein should we read, the very bottom and the soul of hope, the very list, the very utmost bound, of all our fortunes, Earl of Douglas, faith, and so we should, where now remains a sweet reversion, we may boldly spend upon the hope of what, is to come in, a comfort of retirement lives in this, Hotspur, a rendezvous, a home to fly unto, if that the devil and mischance look big, upon the maiden head of our affairs, Earl of Worcester, but yet I would your father had been here, the quality and hair of our attempt, brooks no division, it will be thought, by some, that know not why he is away, that wisdom, loyalty and mere dislike, of our proceedings kept the earl from hence, 
and think how such an apprehension, may turn the tide of fearful faction, and breed a kind of question in our cause. For well you know we of the offering side, must keep aloof from strict arbitrament, and stop all sight holes, every loop from whence, the eye of reason may pry in upon us. This absence of your father's draws a curtain, that shows the ignorant a kind of fear, before not dreamt of, hot spur, you strain too far, I rather of his absence make this use, it lends a luster and more great opinion, a larger dare to our great enterprise, than if the earl were here, for men must think, if we without his help can make a head, to push against a kingdom, with his help, we shall o'erturn it topsy-turvy down, yet all goes well, yet all our joints are whole, earl of Douglas, as heart can think, there is not such a word, spoke of in Scotland as this term of fear, enter Sir Richard Vernon, Hotspur, my cousin Vernon, welcome, by my soul, Vernon, pray God my news be worth the welcome, Lord, the Earl of Westmoreland, seven thousand strong, is marching high the woods, with him Prince John, Hotspur, no harm, what more, Vernon, and further, I have learned, the king himself in person is set forth, or high the woods intended speedily, with strong and mighty preparation, Hotspur, he shall be welcome too. Where is his son? The nimble-footed madcap Prince of Wales, and his comrades, that daft the world aside. And bid it pass, Vernon, all furnished, all in arms, all plumed like estridges that with the wind, baited like eagles having lately bathed, glittering in golden coats, like images, as full of spirit as the month of May, and gorgeous as the sun at midsummer. Wanton as youthful goats, wild as young bulls, I saw young Harry, with his beaver on. His cuisses on his thighs, gallantly armed, rise from the ground like feathered mercury, and vaulted with such ease into his seat, as if an angel dropped down from the clouds, to turn and wind a fiery pegasus, and which the world with noble horsemanship, hot spur, no more, no more, worse than the sun in March. This praise doth nourish agues. Let them come. They come like sacrifices in a dream, and to the fire eyed made of smoky war, all hot and bleeding will we offer them. The mailed marshal on his altar sit, up to the ears in blood. I am on fire, to hear this rich reprisal is so nigh, and yet not ours. Come, let me taste my horse, who is to bear me like a thunderbolt, against the bosom of the Prince of Wales. Harry to Harry shall, hot horse to horse, meet and ne'er part till one drop down a course, oh that Glendower were come. Vernon, there is more news. I learned in Worcester, as I rode along. He cannot draw his power this fourteen days, Earl of Douglas, that's the worst tidings that I hear of yet, Worcester, eh, by my faith, that bears a frosty sound, Hotspur, what may the king's whole battle reach unto, Vernon, to thirty thousand, Hotspur, forty let it be, my father and Glendower being both away. The powers of us may serve so great a day, come, let us take a muster speedily. Doomsday is near, die all, die merrily, Earl of Douglas, talk not of dying, I am out of fear, of death or death's hand for this one half year, exeunt, scene two. A public road near Coventry, enter Falstaff and Bardolph Falstaff, Bardolph, get thee before to Coventry, fill me a, bottle of sack, our soldiers shall march through, wheel to Sutton Coffee tonight, Bardolph, will you give me money, Captain, Falstaff, lay out, lay out. Bardolph, this bottle makes an angel, false stuff, and if it do, take it for thy labor, and if it make, twenty, take them all, I'll answer the coinage. Bid, my lieutenant Peter meet me at town's end, Bardolph, I will, captain, farewell, exit, false stuff, if I be not ashamed of my soldiers, I am a soused, Gurnet. I have misused the king's breast damnably, I have got, in exchange of a hundred and fifty, soldiers. Three hundred and odd pounds. I press me, none but good householders, yeomen's sons, inquire, me out contracted bachelors, such as had been asked, twice on the bands, such a commodity of warm slaves, as had us leave here the devil as a drum, such as, fear the report of a caliver worse than a struck, foul or a hurt wild duck. I pressed me none but such. Toasts and butter, with hearts in their bellies no, bigger than pins heads, and they have bought out their services, and now my whole charge consists of, ancients, corporals, lieutenants, gentlemen of, companies, slaves as ragged as Lazarus in their, painted cloth, where the glutton's dogs licked his, sores, and such as indeed were never soldiers, but, 
discarded unjust serving men, younger sons too, younger brothers, revolted tapsters and oslers. Trade fallen, the cankers of a calm world and a long peace, ten times more dishonorable ragged than an old faced ancient, and such have I, to fill up the rooms of them that have bought out their services, that you would think that I had a hundred and fifty tattered prodigals lately come from swine keeping, from eating drift and husks. A mad fellow met me on the way and told me I had unloaded all the gibbets and pressed the dead bodies. No, I hath seen such scarecrows. I'll not march through Coventry with them, that's flat, nay, and there, villains march wide betwixt the legs, as if they had jives on, for indeed I had the most of them out of prison. There's but a shirt and a half in all my company, and the half shirt is two napkins tacked together and thrown over the shoulders like an herald's coat without sleeves, and the shirt, to say the truth, stolen from my host at St. Albans, or the red nose and keeper of Daventry. But that's all, one, they'll find linen enough on every hedge. Enter the Prince and Westmoreland, Prince Henry, how now, blown Jack? How now, quilt, false stuff, what, Hal? How now, mad wag? What a devil dost thou, in Warwickshire? My good lord of Westmoreland, I, cry you mercy, I thought your honour had already been, at Shrewsbury, Westmoreland, faith, Sir John Cometis more than time that I were, there, and you too, but my powers are there already, the king, I can tell you, looks for us all, we must, away all night, fall stuff, tut, never fear me, I am as vigilant as a cat to, steal cream, Prince Henry, I think, to steal cream indeed, for thy theft hath, already made thee butter. But tell me, Jack, whose fellows are these that come after, false stuff, mine, pal, mine, Prince Henry. I did never see such pitiful rascals, false stuff, tut, tut, good enough to toss, food for powder, food, for powder, they'll fill up it as well as better. Tush, man, mortal men, mortal men, Westmoreland, eh? But, Sir John, methinks they are exceeding poor, and bare, too beggarly false stuff, faith, for their poverty, I know not where they had, that, and for their bareness, I am sure they never, learned that of me, Prince Henry, no I'll be sworn, unless you call three fingers on, the ribs bare, but, sirrah, make haste, Percy is, already in the field, false stuff, what, is the king encamped, Westmoreland, he is, Sir John, I fear we shall stay too long, false stuff, well, to the latter end of a fray and the beginning of a feast, fits a dull fighter and a keen guest, exeunt, scene three, the rebel camp near Shrewsbury, enter Hotspur, Worcester, Douglas, and Vernon Hotspur, we'll fight with him tonight, Earl of Worcester, it may not be, Earl of Douglas, you give him then the advantage, Vernon, not a whit, Hotspur, why say you so, looks he not for supply, Vernon, so do we, Hotspur, his is certain, Ours is doubtful, Earl of Worcester, good cousin, be advised, stir not tonight, Vernon, do not, my lord, Earl of Douglas, you do not counsel well. You speak it out of fear and cold heart, Vernon. Do me no slander, Douglas, by my life. And I dare well maintain it with my life. If well respected honour bid me on. I hold as little counsel with weak fear, as you, my lord, or any Scot that this day lives. Let it be seen tomorrow in the battle. Which of us fears, Earl of Douglas, yea, or tonight, Vernon, content, Hotspur, tonight, say I, Vernon, come, come it may not be. I wonder much, being men of such great leading as you are, that you foresee not what impediments, drag back our expedition, certain horse, of my cousin Vernon's are not yet come up. Your uncle Worcester's horse came but today, and now their pride and mettle is asleep, their courage with hard labor tame and dull that not a horse is half the half of himself, Hotspur, so are the horses of the enemy, in general, journey baited and brought low, the better part of ours are full of rest, Earl of Worcester, the number of the king exceedeth ours, for God's sake, cousin, stay till all coming, the trumpet sounds a parley, enter Sir Walter Blunt, Sir Walter Blunt, I come with gracious offers from the king, if you vouchsafe me hearing and respect, Hotspur, welcome, Sir Walter Blunt, and would to God, you were of our determination, some of us love you well, and even though some, envy your great deservings and good name, because you are not of our quality, but stand against us like an enemy, Sir Walter Blunt, 
and God defend but still I should stand so. So long as out of limit and true rule, you stand against anointed majesty, but to my charge. The king hath sent to know, the nature of your griefs, and whereupon, you conjure from the breast of civil peace, such bold hostility, teaching his duteous land, audacious cruelty. If that the king, have any way your good deserts forgot, which he confesseth to be manifold, he bids you name your griefs, and with all speed, you shall have your desires with interest, and pardon absolute for yourself and these, herein misled by your suggestion, Hotspur, the king is kind, and well we know the king, knows at what time to promise, when to pay, my father and my uncle and myself, did give him that same royalty he wears, and when he was not six and twenty strong, sick in the world's regard, wretched and low, a poor unminded outlaw sneaking home, my father gave him welcome to the shore, and when he heard him swear and vow to God, he came but to be Duke of Lancaster, to sue his livery and beg his peace, with tears of innocency and terms of zeal, my father, in kind heart and pity moved, swore him assistance and performed it too, now when the lords and barons of the realm, perceived Northumberland did lean to him, the more and less came in with cap and knee, met him in boroughs, cities, villages, attended him on bridges, stood in lanes, laid gifts before him, proffered him their oaths, gave him their heirs, as pages followed him, even at the heels in golden multitudes, he presently, as greatness knows itself, steps me a little higher than his vow, made to my father, while his blood was poor, upon the naked shore at Ravensburg, and now, forsooth, takes on him to reform, some certain edicts and some straight decrees, that lie too heavy on the commonwealth, cries out upon abuses, seems to weep, over his country's wrongs, and by this face, this seeming brow of justice, did he win, the hearts of all that he did angle for, proceeded further, cut me off the heads, of all the favourites that the absent king, in deputation left behind him here, when he was personal in the Irish war, Sir Walter Blunt, tut, I came not to hear this, Hotspur, then to the point, in short time after, he deposed the king, soon after that, deprived him of his life, and in the neck of that, tasked the whole state, to make that worse, suffered his kinsman march, who is, if every owner were well placed, indeed his king, to be engaged in Wales, there without ransom to lie forfeited, disgraced me in my happy victories, sought to entrap me by intelligence, rated mine uncle from the council board, in rage dismissed my father from the court, broke oath on oath, committed wrong on wrong, and in conclusion drove us to seek out, this head of safety, and with all to pry, into his title, the which we find, too indirect for long continuance, Sir Walter Blunt, shall I return this answer to the king, Hotspur, not so, Sir Walter, we'll withdraw a while, go to the king, and let the be impawned, some surety for a safe return again, and in the morning early shall my uncle, bring him our purposes, and so farewell, Sir Walter Blunt, I would you would accept of grace and love, Hotspur, and maybe so we shall, Sir Walter Blunt, pray God you do, Exeunt, Scene 4. York. The Archbishop's Palace. Enter the Archbishop of York and Sir Michael Archbishop of York. Hi, good Sir Michael. Bear this sealed brief, with winged haste to the Lord Marshal. This to my cousin Scroop, and all the rest, to whom they are directed. If you knew, how much they do to import, you would make haste, Sir Michael, my good Lord. I guess their tenor, Archbishop of York, like enough you do, tomorrow, good Sir Michael, is a day, wherein the fortune of ten thousand men, must bide the touch, for, Sir, at Shrewsbury, as I am truly given to understand, the king with mighty and quick raised power, meets with Lord Harry, and, I fear, Sir Michael, what with the sickness of Northumberland, whose power was in the first proportion, and what with Owen Glendower's absence thence, who with them was a rated sinew too, and comes not in, or ruled by prophecies. I fear the power of Percy is too weak, to wage an instant trial with the king, Sir Michael, why, my good lord, you need not fear. There is Douglas and Lord Mortimer, Archbishop of York. No, Mortimer is not there, Sir Michael, but there is Mordig, Vernon, Lord Harry Percy. And there is my lord of Worcester and a head, of gallant warriors, noble gentlemen, Archbishop of York. And so there is, but yet the king hath drawn, the special head of all the land together, the Prince of Wales, Lord John of Lancaster, the noble Westmoreland and warlike Blunt, 
and my co-rivals and dear men, of estimation and command in arms, Sir Michael. Doubt not, my lord, they shall be well opposed, Archbishop of York, I hope no less, yet needful tis to fear. And, to prevent the worst, Sir Michael, speed. For if Lord Percy thrive not, ere the king dismiss his power, he means to visit us, for he hath heard of our confederacy, and tis but wisdom to make strong against him, therefore make haste. I must go right again, to other friends, and so farewell, Sir Michael, Exeunt, Act 5, Scene I. King Henry Forrest Camp near Shrewsbury, Enter King Henry, Prince Henry, Lord John of Lancaster, Earl of Westmoreland, Sir Walter Blunt, and Falstaff King Henry IV, how bloodily the sun begins to peer, above yon busky hill. The day looks pale, at his distemperature, Prince Henry, the southern wind, doth play the trumpet to his purposes, and by his hollow whistling in the leaves, foretells a tempest and a blustering day, King Henry IV, then with the losers let it sympathize, for nothing can seem foul to those that win, the trumpet sounds, enter Worcester and Vernon, how now, my lord of Worcester, tis not well, that you and I should meet upon such terms, as now we meet, you have deceived our trust, and made us off our easy robes of peace, to crush our old limbs in ungentle steel, this is not well, my lord, this is not well, what say you to it, will you again unknit, this curlish knot of all abhorred war, and move in that obedient orb again, where you did give a fair and natural light, and be no more an exhaled meteor, a prodigy of fear and a portent, of broached mischief to the unborn times, Earl of Worcester, hear me, my liege, for mine own part, I could be well content, to entertain the lag end of my life, with quiet hours, for I do protest, I have not sought the day of this dislike, King Henry IV, you have not sought it, how comes it, then, Falstaff, rebellion lay in his way, and he found it, Prince Henry, peace, shew it, peace, Earl of Worcester, it pleased your majesty to turn your looks, a favour from myself and all our house, and yet I must remember you, my lord, we were the first and dearest of your friends, for you my staff of office did I break, in Richard's time, and posted day and night, to meet you on the way, and kiss your hand, when yet you were in place and in account, nothing so strong and fortunate as I, it was myself, my brother and his son, that brought you home and boldly did out dare, the dangers of the time, you swore to us, and you did swear that oath at Doncaster, that you did nothing purpose against the state, nor claim no further than your new fawn right, the seat of Gaunt, dukedom of Lancaster. To this we swore our aid. But in short space, it rained down fortune showering on your head, and such a flood of greatness fell on you. What with our help, what with the absent king, what with the injuries of a wanton time, the seeming sufferances that you had borne, and the contrarious winds that held the king, so long in his unlucky Irish wars, that all in England did repute him dead and from this swarm of fair advantages, you took occasion to be quickly wooed, to gripe the general sway into your hand, forget your oath to us at Doncaster, and being fed by us you used us so, as that ungentle hull, the cuckoo's bird, useth the sparrow, did oppress our nest, grew by our feeding to so great a bulk, that even our love durst not come near your sight, for fear of swallowing, but with nimble wing, we were enforced, for safety's sake, to fly, out of sight and raise this present head, whereby we stand opposed by such means, as you yourself have forged against yourself, by unkind usage, dangerous countenance, and violation of all faith and troth, sworn to us in your younger enterprise, King Henry IV, these things indeed you have articulate, proclaimed at market crosses, read in churches, to face the garment of rebellion, with some fine colour that may please the eye, of fickle changelings and poor discontents, which gape and rub the elbow at the news, of hurly-burly innovation, and never yet did insurrection want, such watercolours to impaint his cause, nor moody beggars, starving for a time, of pell-mill havoc and confusion, Prince Henry, in both your armies there is many a soul, shall pay full dearly for this encounter, if once they join in trial, tell your nephew, the Prince of Wales doth join with all the world, in praise of Henry Percy, by my hopes, this present enterprise set off his head, I do not think a braver gentleman, more active valiant or more valiant young, more daring or more bold, is now alive, to grace this latter age with noble deeds, for my part, I may speak it to my shame, I have a truant been to chivalry, 
and so I hear he doth account me too. Yet this before my father's majesty, I am content that he shall take the odds, of his great name and estimation, and will, to save the blood on either side. Try fortune with him in a single fight, King Henry IV, and, Prince of Wales, so dare we venture thee. Albeit considerations infinite, do make against it. No, good Worcester, no. We love our people well, even those we love, that are misled upon your cousin's part. And, will they take the offer of our grace? Both he and they and you, every man, shall be my friend again and I'll be his. So tell your cousin, and bring me word, what he will do, but if he will not yield, rebuke and dread correction wait on us, and they shall do their office. So, be gone. We will not now be troubled with reply. We off for fair, take it advisedly, Exeunt Worcester and Vernon, Prince Henry, it will not be accepted, on my life. The Douglas and the Hotspur both together, are confident against the world in arms, King Henry IV, hence, therefore, every leader to his charge. For, on their answer, will we set on them. And God befriend us, as our cause is just, exeunt all but Prince Henry and Falstaff, Falstaff, Tal, if thou see me down in the battle and bestride, me, so, tis a point of friendship, Prince Henry, nothing but a colossus can do thee that friendship, say thy prayers, and farewell, Falstaff, I would we are bedtime, Tal, and all well, Prince Henry, why, thou owest God a death, exit Prince Henry, Falstaff, tis not due yet, I would be loath to pay him before, his day. What need I be so forward with him that, calls not on me? Well, tis no matter, honour pricks, me on. Yea, but how if honour prick me off when I, come on? How then? Can honour set to a leg? Number or, an arm? Number or take away the grief of a wound? Number, honour hath no skill in surgery, then? No. What is, honour? A word. What is in that word honour? What, is that honour? Air. A trim reckoning. Who hath it, he that died o' Wednesday? Doth he feel it? Number, doth he hear it? No. Tis insensible, then. Yea, to the dead. But will it not live with the living? No. Why? Detraction will not suffer it. Therefore, I'll none of it. Honour is a mere scutcheon, and so, ends my catechism, exit, scene two. The rebel camp, enter Worcester and Vernon Earl of Worcester, oh, no, my nephew must not know, Sir Richard. The liberal and kind offer of the king, Vernon, we are best he did, Earl of Worcester, then are we all undone, it is not possible, it cannot be. The king should keep his word in loving us. He will suspect us still and find a time, to punish this offence in other faults. Suspicion all our lives shall be stuck full of eyes, for treason is but trusted like the fox, who, ne'er so tame, so cherished and locked up, will have a wild trick of his ancestors. Look how we can, or sad or merrily. Interpretation will misquote our looks. And we shall feed like oxen at a stall. The better cherished, still the nearer death, my nephew's trespass may be well forgot. It hath the excuse of youth and heat of blood. And an adopted name of privilege. A hair-brained hotspur, governed by a spleen. All his offences live upon my head, and on his father's, we did train him on. And, his corruption being ta'en from us, we, as the spring of all, shall pay for all, therefore, good cousin, let not Harry know. In any case, the offer of the king, Vernon, deliver what you will, I'll say tis so, here comes your cousin, enter Hotspur and Douglas, Hotspur, my uncle is returned. Deliver up my lord of Westmoreland, uncle, what news, Earl of Worcester, the king will bid you battle presently, Earl of Douglas, defy him by the lord of Westmoreland, Hotspur, Lord Douglas, go you and tell him so. Earl of Douglas, marry, and shall, and very willingly, exit, Earl of Worcester, there is no seeming mercy in the king, Hotspur, did you beg any? God forbid, Earl of Worcester, I told him gently of our grievances, of his oath-breaking, which he mended thus, by now forswearing that he is forsworn, he calls us rebels, traitors, and will scourge, with haughty arms this hateful name in us, re-enter the Earl of Douglas, Earl of Douglas, arm, gentlemen, to arms. For I have thrown, a brave defiance in King Henry's teeth. And Westmoreland, that was engaged, did bear it. Which cannot choose but bring him quickly on, Earl of Worcester, the Prince of Wales stepped forth before the King. And, nephew, challenged you to single fight, Hotspur, oh, 
would the quarrel lay upon our heads, and that no man might draw short breath today, but I and Harry Monmouth. Tell me, tell me. How showed his tasking? Seemed it in contempt, Vernon, no, by my soul, I never in my life, did hear a challenge urged more modestly. Unless a brother should a brother dare, to gentle exercise and proof of arms, he gave you all the duties of man. Trimmed up your praises with a princely tongue. Spoke to your deservings like a chronicle. Making you ever better than his praise, by still dispraising praise valued in you. And, which became him like a prince indeed. He made a blushing sight of himself. And chid his truant youth with such a grace, as if he mastered their double spirit, of teaching and of learning instantly. There did he pause, but let me tell the world, if he outlive the envy of this day. England did never row so sweet a hope, so much misconstrued in his wantonness. Hotspur, cousin, I think thou art enamoured, on his follies, never did I hear, of any prince so wild a libertine, but be he as he will, yet once ere night, I will embrace him with a soldier's arm that he shall shrink under my courtesy, arm, arm with speed, and, fellows, soldiers, friends, better consider what you have to do, than I, that have not well the gift of tongue, can lift your blood up with persuasion, enter a messenger, messenger, my lord, here are letters for you, hotspur, I cannot read them now, O oh, gentlemen, the time of life is short, to spend that shortness basely were too long, if life did ride upon a dial's point, still ending at the arrival of an hour, and if we live, we live to tread on kings, if die, brave death, when princes die with us, now, for our consciences, the arms are fair, when the intent of bearing them is just, enter another messenger, messenger, my lord, prepare, the king comes on apace, hotspur, I thank him, that he cuts me from my tail, for I profess not talking, only this, let each man do his best, and here draw I, a sword, whose temper I intend to stain, with the best blood that I can meet with all, in the adventure of this perilous day, now, Esperance, Percy, and set on, sound all the lofty instruments of war, and by that music let us all embrace, for, heaven to earth, some of us never shall, a second time do such a courtesy, the trumpets sound, they embrace, and exeunt, scene three, playing between the camps, King Henry enters with his power, alarum to the battle, then enter Douglas and Sir Walter Blunt, Sir Walter Blunt, what is thy name, that in the battle thus, thou crossest me? What honour dost thou seek, upon my head, Earl of Douglas, know then, my name is Douglas, and I do haunt thee in the battle thus, because some tell me that thou art a king, Sir Walter Blunt, they tell thee true, Earl of Douglas, the Lord of Stafford dear today hath bought, thy likeness, for instead of thee, King Harry, this sword hath ended him, so shall it thee. Unless thou yield thee as my prisoner, Sir Walter Blunt, I was not born a yielder, thou proud Scot. And thou shalt find a king that will revenge, Lord Stafford's death, they fight. Douglas kills Sir Walter Blunt. Enter Hotspur, Hotspur, O Douglas, hadst thou fought at home and thus? Never had triumphed upon a Scot, Earl of Douglas, all's done, all's won, here breathless lies the king, Hotspur, where, Earl of Douglas, here. Hotspur, this, Douglas. Number I know this face full well. A gallant knight he was. His name was Blunt. Semblably furnished like the king himself, Earl of Douglas, a fool go with thy soul, whither it goes, a borrowed title hast thou bought too dear. Why didst thou tell me that thou wert a king, Hotspur, the king hath many marching in his coats, Earl of Douglas, now, by my sword, I will kill all his coats, I'll murder all his wardrobe, piece by piece until I meet the king, Hotspur, up, and away, our soldiers stand full fairly for the day, exeunt, alarum, enter Falstaff, solace, Falstaff, though I could scape shot free at London, I fear, the shot here, here's no scoring but upon the pate, soft, who are you, Sir Walter Blunt, there's honour, for you, here's no vanity, I am as hot as molten, lead, and as heavy too, God keep lead out of me, I, need no more weight than mine own bowels. I have, led my ragamuffins where they are peppered, there's, not three of my hundred and fifty left alive, and, they are for the town's end, to beg during life, but who comes here, enter Prince Henry, Prince Henry, what, standst thou idle here? Lend me thy sword, many a nobleman lies stark and stiff, under the hoofs of vaunting enemies, whose deaths are yet unrevenged, I prithee, 
lend me thy sword, false stuff, O oh Hal, I prithee, give me leave to breathe a while, Turk Gregory never did such deeds in arms as I have, done this day, I have paid Percy, I have made him sure, Prince Henry, he is, indeed, and living to kill thee, I prithee, lend me thy sword, false stuff, nay, before God, Hal, if Percy be alive, thou gettest, not my sword, but take my pistol, if thou wilt, Prince Henry, give it to me, what, is it in the case, false stuff, eh, Hal, tis hot, tis hot, there's that will sack a city, Prince Henry draws it out, and finds it to be a bottle of sack, Prince Henry, what, is it a time to jest and dally now, he throws the bottle at him, exit, false stuff, well, if Percy be alive, I'll pierce him, if he do, come in my way, so, if he do not, if I come in his, willingly, let him make a carbonado of me, I like, not such grinning honour as Sir Walter hath, give me, life, which if I can save, so, if not, honour comes, unlooked for, and there's an end, exit full stuff, scene 4, another part of the field, alarum, excursions, enter Prince Henry, Lord John of Lancaster, and Earl of Westmoreland King Henry IV, I prithee, Harry, withdraw thyself, thou bleedst too much, Lord John of Lancaster, go you with him, Lancaster, not I, my lord, unless I did bleed too, Prince Henry, I beseech your majesty, make up, lest your retirement do amaze your friends, King Henry IV, I will do so, my lord of Westmoreland, lead him to his tent, Westmoreland, come, my lord, I'll lead you to your tent, Prince Henry, lead me, my lord, I do not need your help, and God forbid a shallow scratch should drive, the Prince of Wales from such a field as this, where stained nobility lies trodden on, and rebels arms triumph in massacres, Lancaster, we breathe too long, come, cousin Westmoreland, our duty this way lies, for God's sake come, exeunt Lancaster and Westmoreland, Prince Henry, by God, thou hast deceived me, Lancaster, I did not think thee lord of such a spirit, before, I loved thee as a brother, John, but now, I do respect thee as my soul, King Henry IV, I saw him hold Lord Percy at the point, with lustier maintenance than I did look for, of such an ungrown warrior, Prince Henry, oh, this boy, lends metal to us all, exit, enter Douglas, Earl of Douglas, another king, they grow like Hydra's heads, I am the Douglas, fatal to all those, that wear those colours on them, what art thou, that counterfeits the person of a king, King Henry IV, the king himself, who, Douglas, grieves at heart, so many of his shadows thou hast met, and not the very king. I have two boys, seek Percy and thyself about the field. But, seeing thou falst on me so luckily, I will assay thee, so, defend thyself, Earl of Douglas, I fear thou art another counterfeit. And yet, in faith, thou bearst thee like a king. But mine I am sure thou art, her thou be. And thus I win thee, they fight. King Henry being in danger, Prince Henry enters, Prince Henry, hold up thy head, vile Scot, or thou art like, never to hold it up again. The spirits, of valiant Shirley, Stafford, Blunt, are in my arms. It is the Prince of Wales that threatens thee, who never promiseth but he means to pay, they fight, Douglas flies, cheerly, my lord how fares your grace, Sir Nicholas Gorsy hath for succour sent. And so hath Clifton, out to Clifton straight, King Henry IV stay, and breathe a while, thou hast redeemed thy lost opinion, and showed thou makest some tender of my life, in this fair rescue thou hast brought to me, Prince Henry, O oh God, they did me too much injury, that ever said I hearken for your death, if it were so, I might have let alone, the insulting hand of Douglas over you, which would have been as speedy in your end, as all the poisonous potions in the world, and saved the treacherous labour of your son, King Henry IV, make up to Clifton, I'll to Sir Nicholas Corsi, exit, enter Hotspur, Hotspur, if I mistake not, thou art Harry Monmouth, Prince Henry, thou speakst as if I would deny my name, Hotspur, my name is Harry Percy, Prince Henry, why, then I see, a very valiant rebel of the name, I am the Prince of Wales, and think not, Percy, to share with me in glory any more, two stars keep not their motion in one sphere, nor can one England brook a double rain, of Harry Percy and the Prince of Wales, Hotspur, nor shall it, Harry, for the hour is come, to end the one of us, and would to God, thy name in arms were now as great as mine, Prince Henry, 
I'll make it greater ere I part from thee. And all the budding honors on thy crest, I'll crop, to make a garland for my head. Hotspur, I can no longer brook thy vanities, they fight, enter Falstaff, Falstaff, well said, Hal. To it Hal. Nay, you shall find no, boys play here, I can tell you. Re-enter Douglas, he fights with Falstaff, who falls down as if he were dead, and exit Douglas. Hotspur is wounded, and falls, Hotspur, oh, Harry, thou hast robbed me of my youth, I better brook the loss of brittle life, than those proud titles thou hast won of me. They wound my thoughts worse than sword my flesh. But thoughts the slave of life, and lifetime's fool, and time, that takes survey of all the world, must have a stop. Oh, I could prophesy. But that the earthy and cold hand of death, lies on my tongue, no, Percy, thou art dust, and food for, dies, Prince Henry, for worms, brave Percy, fare thee well, great heart, ill-weaved ambition, how much art thou shrunk, when that this body did contain a spirit, a kingdom for it was too small a bound, but now two paces of the vilest earth, is room enough, this earth that bears thee dead, bears not alive so stout a gentleman, if thou wert sensible of courtesy, I should not make so dear a show of zeal. But let my favours hide thy mangled face, and, even in thy behalf, I'll thank myself, for doing these fair rites of tenderness, adieu, and take thy praise with thee to heaven, thy ignominy sleep with thee in the grave. But not remembered in thy epitaph, he speeth false tough on the ground, what, old acquaintance? Could not all this flesh, keep in a little life? Poor Jack, farewell, I could have better spared a better man. Oh, I should have a heavy miss of thee. If I were much in love with vanity, death hath not struck so fat a deer today. Though many dearer, in this bloody fray, embowelled will I see thee by and by. Till then in blood by noble Percy lie, exit Prince Henry, Falstaff, rising up, embowelled. If thou embowel me today, I'll give you leave to powder me and eat me too tomorrow. Splod Comet was time to counterfeit, or, that hot term against Scott had paid me Scott and Lot too, counterfeit. I lie, I am no counterfeit, to die, is to be a counterfeit, for he is but there, counterfeit of a man who hath not the life of man. But to counterfeit dying, when a man thereby, liveth, is to be no counterfeit, but the true and, perfect image of life indeed. The better part of, valour is discretion, in the which better part one, have saved my life. Zounds, I am afraid of this, gunpowder Percy, though he be dead, how, if he, should counterfeit too and rise? By my faith, I am, afraid he would prove the better counterfeit, therefore I'll make him sure, yea, and I'll swear I, killed him. Why may not he rise as well as I, nothing confutes me but A's, and nobody sees me, therefore, sirrah, stabbing him, with a new wound in your thigh, come you along with me, takes up Hotspur on his back, re-enter Prince Henry and Lord John of Lancaster, Prince Henry, come, brother John, full bravely hast thou fleshed, thy maiden sword, Lancaster, but, soft, whom have we here, did you not tell me this fat man was dead, Prince Henry, I did, I saw him dead, breathless and bleeding on the ground, art, thou alive, or is it fantasy that plays upon our eyesight, I prithee, speak, we will not trust our eyes, without our ears, thou art not what thou seem street, false stuff, no, that's certain, I am not a double man, but if I, be not Jack false stuff, then am I a Jack. There is Percy, throwing the body down, if your father will do me any honour, so, if not, let, him kill the next Percy himself. I look to be either, a oh Lord Duke, I can assure you, Prince Henry, why, Percy I killed myself and saw thee dead, false stuff, didst thou? Lord, Lord, how this world is given to, lying. I grant you I was down and out of breath. And so was he, but we rose both at an instant and, fought a long hour by Shrewsbury clock. If I may be, believed, so, if not, let them that should reward, valour bear the sin upon their own heads. I'll take, it upon my death, I gave him this wound in their, thigh, if the man were alive and would deny it. Zounds, I would make him eat a piece of my sword, Lancaster. This is the strangest tale that ever I heard, Prince Henry, this is the strangest fellow, Brother John, come, bring your luggage nobly on your back, for my part, if a lie may do thee grace, I'll gild it with the happiest terms I have, a retreat is sounded, the trumpet sounds retreat, the day is ours, 
Come, brother, let us to the highest of the field. To see what friends are living, who are dead, exeunt Prince Henry and Lancaster, Falstaff, I'll follow, as they say, for reward. He that, rewards me, God reward him. If I do grow great, I'll grow less, for I'll purge, and leave sack, and, live cleanly as a nobleman should do, exit, scene v. Another part of the field, the trumpets sound. Enter King Henry IV, Prince Henry, Lord John Lancaster, Earl of Westmoreland, with Worcester and Vernon prisoners King Henry IV, thus ever did rebellion find rebuke, ill-spirited Worcester. Did not we send grace, pardon and terms of love to all of you, and wouldest thou turn our offers contrary? Misuse the tenor of thy kinsman's trust, three knights upon our party slain today, a noble earl and many a creature else, had been alive this hour, if like a Christian thou hadst truly born, betwixt our army's true intelligence, Earl of Worcester, what I have done my safety urged me to, and I embrace this fortune patiently, since not to be avoided it falls on me, King Henry IV, bear Worcester to the death and Vernon too, other offenders we will pause upon, exeunt Worcester and Vernon, guarded, how goes the field, Prince Henry, the noble Scot, Lord Douglas, when he saw, the fortune of the day quite turned from him, the noble Percy slain, and all his men, upon the foot of fear, fled with the rest, and falling from a hill, he was so bruised, that the pursuers took him, at my tent, the Douglas is, and I beseech your grace, I may dispose of him, King Henry IV, with all my heart, Prince Henry, then, brother John of Lancaster, to you this honourable bounty shall belong. Go to the Douglas, and deliver him, up to his pleasure, ransomless and free. His valour shown upon our crests today, hath taught us how to cherish such high deeds, even in the bosom of our adversaries, Lancaster, I thank your grace for this high courtesy, which I shall give away immediately, King Henry IV, then this remains, that we divide our power, you, son John, and my cousin Westmoreland, towards York shall bend you with your dearest speed to meet Northumberland and the prelates group, who, as we hear, are busily in arms. Myself and you, son Harry, will towards Wales, to fight with Glendower and the Earl of March, rebellion in this land shall lose his sway, meeting the check of such another day, and since this business so fair is done, let us not leave till all our own be won, exeunt.